Hey, it's White Boy Chris. If the Pat Down's ever made you laugh, then join our Patreon and support us. Get bonus content, a t-shirt, or an autographed copy of Rabbit, Miss Pat's autobiography. Visit misspatcomedy.com for the link to the Patreon, and while you're there, join our Facebook group. Welcome to the n- another episode of the Pat Down. This is special today, goddammit. It's our 50th episode. We made it, bitches, in 50! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> it's for 50. 50 11 times. Don't do that, Chris. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned after the music. We talk about so, a lot of shit. Give me a little soul food and look what happens. <laughs> yeah, we fed this motherfucker some oxtail. I think he, I think your dick turned black. <laughs> Oh, God, I hope so. <laughs> Stay tuned after the music. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Pat Down. We ready? I'm ready. It's our 50th podcast, and we are stuck in the house from a quarantine with these crazy-ass kids. Um, it's been rough around this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you For know who? it's rough when I'm up to this motherfucker looking like I'm in the Jackson 5. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't had a wig on since the quarantine started. I know my hair was like, bitch! <laughs> by, this, by the time this shit is over, black bitches are gonna have edges back because we get to grease these motherfuckers with them wigs and pull your edges out of that. You have no clue what the fuck I'm I talking have, about. I have no, that. no, I <laughs> yeah. have not so a clue So when you wear a lot of wigs sometimes and eat the rim of all hair, they're almost like the unties. So <laughs> <laughs> that was just unnecessary yeah, and was, hurtful and every hilarious. Chance, every chance she get. <laughs> well, she I'm trying to explain it. to you what a rubber come off at. <laughs> 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 so, right, turn, your, turn your phone off. Oh, this is my friend. So, um, the edge of, uh, I'm treating my edges and I'm treating my skin, and I need to go walking, man. I've just been cooking every day, getting fat. If you go walking, a bird's gonna land in your hair and try to build a nest. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm scared of, motherfucker. I'm hoping not, but I need to go exercise because I don't want to gain 15 pounds with this quarantine. Either you get fat or you get pregnant, and uh, my shit tied well, we up. Go, we going to lock down. You better get to walking today. I, I well, seriously you can go outside and walk. Can you? Yeah. Yeah. I ain't nobody yeah, gonna yeah. do that shit, nigga. This is America. What the fuck you think we at Mexico, China? You a, you a black Talk. woman in a white neighborhood. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Ain't nobody gonna fuck. They gonna me. call the national guard to this house and this house only. <laughs> yeah. Well, I bring mean, them on, goddamn it. You better bring some groceries with you. Uh, and like the one of the the problems is the symptoms is like breathing problems, and I'm just like, ah, oh, I woke up with a, a sore stomach today and breathing How problems. How the fuck you have a soul storming, nigga? Because I was eating too much crap food last night and I haven't exercised in two and a half weeks. I'm like. I'm not sick. I'm just fat and eating too much food. Yeah, so I'm go. I think I'm gonna try X leg diet. Oh what? X legs. Oh, when well, you try to shit out. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't never did. Oh. <laughs> you ain't never did no X leg diet. No, because I just try to eat less. I don't want to shit my brains out. I yeah, I, I, I need to shit my brains out. Why would you do this to yourself? Because I need to shit, Chris. I mean, <laughs> are you I, having problems? Always. She's Wait. always stopped up. Well, She's the get, opposite of you. Yeah, I yeah. shit too much and she don't shit enough. If you I know. If, if you I have spare his... toilet paper, please help Dion out. <laughs> Dion ain't got no toilet paper. I got plenty of toilet paper. It was well, a joke. You can always use a tampon. I mean a Kotak. <laughs> I've wiped my ass with you a Kotak. You can't Kotec. flush those. No, nigga, wrap them up and put them in the toilet like they had blood on them. That's all you gotta do. You don't put them in the toilet. I no. mean not the toilet, oh, no. the trash. Oh, okay. I was like yeah. worried. Yeah, you go. I, you man. don't have shit in your trash. Well, so a lot of shit is in your trash. Yeah, but <laughs> you have to take the trash out every day. Then, if you, you're just throwing- I do take the trash out every day. Who the fuck don't take the trash out? I take the trash out seven, eight times a day, nigga. Why? Because I got twelve people in my motherfucking house, <laughs> and the trash point. can't full fill up. <laughs> Fucking why? Who the fuck you live I'm with? Just Nobody. Saying, no, we, the bathroom trash can doesn't. Be taking out I every day. all the fucking trash cans. I mean, I mean, you can. You, you don't. Ramon does. After Ramon you tell does. him, well, <laughs> you can always wipe your ass with newspaper. You can flush newspaper. Who gets newspaper? I haven't seen a newspaper in like five years. If uh, you can't flush the flushable wipes. You can't flush. You definitely tubes. can't flush. You can flush paper. newspaper. It's paper. No, no, not if at you all. Don't, I, if you don't make it too thick. <laughs> 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 don't you get the weekly. One ply, What's in the news? Harvey Weinstein got coronavirus. Yeah, shit, I don't wipe my ass. ass. <laughs> Save that article. Yeah. <laughs> Save that article. You someone, ain't never. You some, ain't, no, yeah. someone said that to me yesterday. They go, I "Just you did, don't flush those flushable wipes. Put them in the trash can." I go, "That defeats the whole point. I don't want to smell my own shit." What are you talking? Take about? it to the trash can. My, my, my eyelashes feel like you're leaning <clears throat> like a nigga. No, I've never wiped my ass with anything but toilet paper. 
You've never wiped your ass with a leaf before? No, you can see where I grew up. <laughs> Man, you privileged as fuck, Chris. Yeah, leaf. Who the fuck rubbing their ass with leaves? You never ain't... went camping and had to wipe your ass Nigga, with a leaf? Ain't nobody going camping unless they run from the police? What the fuck wrong with you? <laughs> I wipe my ass with a leaf. I don't before. pretend to be poor. Please. Uh, nigga, you been camping? Yeah, I went camping one time. Well, who? Some people I knew, some friends. So, why are you wiping your ass with newspaper? Why don't you just throw dirt up in your ass and then shake it out? Here's a crazy idea. Why because you that take- doesn't feel good. What the <laughs> fuck, Pat? Have you ever thrown dirt dirt up your ass? One time I was doing it in the uh, I don't park know. with my baby daddy, and he had me land on them rocks. And then, you know, when you fuck, you a whoop, whoop, You got whoop. gravel up your ass? I had gravel up my ass. <laughs> <laughs> you never had gravel in your ass? No, I don't fucking driveways. <laughs> oh. It wasn't a driveway. It was up under the tree, up under the moon, where the moon set and the stars shot. It was actually romantic, I thought, at the time. <laughs> Because you were 12 and didn't know any better. <laughs> yes. I was like, oh, this nigga got me looking at the sky. It's beautiful. Oh, it's leaves. It's spring and leaves falling that's, all off a of bird. Cock blocking. That's probably where you got the fleas from. Miss <laughs> Pat's new poem, Statutory Romance. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Chris. <laughs> that do kind of sound pretty good. Statutory Romance? Yeah, that doesn't sound good in a court of law, let me no, tell you. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Why do Wait, I feel like my eyelash leaning? Let's go back to the fact that I, when you said oh, wipe your ass with leaves, I thought, well, why wouldn't you just take toilet paper? And her brain went, why didn't you throw dirt up on it? Because <laughs> <laughs> dirt. We were out of toilet monsters. paper. Because when you throw dirt up your ass, it, it holds on to that shit. Then you just shake it all loose and it'll come down with the shit. Right? I don't know what kind of shit you be shitting. But my shit ain't like that. What are you, a cat? You don't <laughs> smash your shit on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm learning you way mean, too much about your <laughs> bowel movement. <laughs> you have been trapped in this house too long. <laughs> Hell yeah, I've been trapped in the house. What are you doing? You are the most extroverted workaholic person I know. And I know I'm on day two and I'm like, yeah, let's podcast. I, like, how are you handling it? Man, it's rough. You know what I feel like? I literally feel like I'm doing time for selling drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've been sentenced with these motherfuckers. This my house husband, that you worked so hard for with the people you love the most. Man, fuck that shit. <laughs> my my hub must snow so goddamn loud. And I'm like, dude, it's, I can't watch everything on Netflix. I've literally watched every fucking movie. I'm tired of watching movies. She called me yesterday. What's a good movie to watch? Because I'm I, I said, I suggested one. I don't want to watch that shit. I'm like, well, then why did you call me? <laughs> I mean, he snored. Like, and I'm beating on him, trying to keep him breathing and shit. I'm like, are you going to die? It's been You need rough. to get him a, 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 a he Zipa. He ain't put that shit on there. He ain't going to put that shit on his face. I tried. The motherfucker, had, his eye was about to go blind. It's a fucking, he had a weak eye. I mean, uh, ligament about to tear. <laughs> so they was like, you got to get to the eye doctor right then and there. So we get to the eye doctor, right? And uh, they go in there and they had to uh, laser his eye, his ligament back. Wow. It was about to tear. Do you know this motherfucker went to work the next day? What? I said, you motherfucking eye leaning. What? <laughs> <laughs> Did he get the thing where the cor- cor- no, the corona? Where he had to get the bubble in his eye and it floated the the thing back in place, or did it just? How did they fix it? Uh, they actually put a laser in there. He said that shit hurt too. I feel like my eyelash leaning. Um, <laughs> is it leaning? I, 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 I I'm you the wrong person me. to ask. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm white as hell. That's a, uh, you a man. But um, they actually went in. Well, it was about to tear because it was about to tear away from the eyeball and it would have blinded him. So they actually went back in there and sealed it up to keep it from tearing. It won't So get he had worse. a detached retina? Yeah, he had a detached retina in the back of his eye and it was fucked up. And he kept saying he he saw floaters. So the man, this is what the doctor said. And this on time, you know, I, doctors went to school for this shit and I trust doctor. But this doctor right here, well, I'm like, nigga, no. So, so the doctor told us. <laughs> I knew there was going to be a big but. Doctors went to school, and I trust doctors, but. <laughs> this nigga literally said, where are you guys from? I said, the South. And he said, I can guarantee you this has been going on in your husband since a kid. I said, what, he eyeball been leaning? He said, what happened was your, your, your husband probably ate some dirt when he was a kid, and it had some worms Did in it. Did it fall out of your ass? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I can bring my husband in here to tell you that. I believe so you. He said, he said he had That's some why I don't. <laughs> you don't walk around eating dirt on the ground because it's been a, <laughs> it's been a mispatch. Twelve year old ass. <laughs> Fuck you. I just realized what you motherfucker talking about. <laughs> so he said he said he said uh, my husband ate some dirt and it probably had some worms in it. So I'm like. Now, my husband, 50 years old. All the time, these worms just been chilling on his motherfucking eyeballs before, before they started to just tears wrecking them apart. He had worms in his eye? No, this is what the doctor told him. That he ate some worms, and it got in his bloodstream. And I don't know the correct name was, but uh, that's why I started to go out. And I'm like, nigga, no. <laughs> no. You sound like a black pastor who said, telling me to email you my ties. I ain't going to believe that shit, doctor. That's really weird. <laughs> and if I'm saying it right, I can call my husband. Y'all think I'm playing. Because I don't want y'all to ever no, think we, I'm lying. No, we believe you. I'm telling you. That what they told I don't us. believe this doctor at for a second that it's, it would take 50 years for worms to... <laughs> Detaches retina. Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Choose the board. Choose the board right here. I was wondering what the fuck that was. Hello. Motherfucker ain't gonna answer. <laughs> Gary, answer the phone. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic. I don't blame him. <laughs> That's a tr- what was the name of them worms that ate your eye? <laughs> Cody, stop eating dirt, nigga. That's your exactly cheap ass. ass. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm about to ask. What's the name of them worms that ate your eye out? Yeah. Hey, baby. What's up? I love you. Thank you for your much. <laughs> Garrett, what was that? Yeah. What, what was the worm the doctor said that ate your eye out? What? You know the worm that ate your eye. <laughs> what he say? You he ate said, that dirt. He said it was a parasite. It was a little, uh, Ain't a parasite know. a worm. <laughs> I don't know what the hell they are. But he didn't say you ate that. dirt. He said you ate dirt about forty years ago, and that <laughs> shit been chilling on your eyeball, and it ate your retina. <laughs> Did he say that? Yeah, he, he said that whack shit. Yeah. <laughs> Do you believe him? Hell no, I don't believe him. <laughs> 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 40 years. I'm, I'm 50 years old. He talked about some shit that happened when I was 6 years old. And he actually convinced you that you ate dirt, but you couldn't remember eating dirt, could you? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to get up out of there. I'm like, this is quack. Oh, qu- and I knew he wasn't shit, because all his bottom teeth were brown like a motherfucker. I said, nigga, what you been eating on ass crack? <laughs> But I don't want people to think I'm lying. Didn't they tell you that them worm be eating at your parasite and that your that your <laughs> eyeball was about to disconnect and you about to go blind, baby? It was a partially detached retina that was uh, caused by some kind of parasite. But he said the yeah. parasite been chilling in you for forty years. Them niggas been free low. And ain't he said that? Yeah, let him say yeah. She's she, what she's getting at is she wants you to pay rent for your parasite eyes. <laughs> <laughs> pay rent. <laughs> she said you got to charge them niggas. <laughs> and did he say the parasite were gone, or they just ate your ligament apart? I don't know. He said he he said uh, he wanted me to take a test to make sure what he said was uh, legit. So. I don't even think I'm gonna take that. I don't even take that mess serious. I ain't gonna take that shit. That's stupid. But did he stop? But he did, and then they scan you. What do they do? They uh, laser your your ligament so it won't fall off, right? Yeah, he, 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 he gave, nah, he gave, he lasered around the uh around the uh damage, and hopefully it don't spread. I I won't know until uh what four more weeks when I go back. So do you lose the both eye or one eye? I ain't losing no eye. What the heck? <laughs> She's trying to write your eye off on her taxes. To put you in TLC. <laughs> okay, I just want to, because everybody be thinking I'm lying. And, and so I got to finish telling you them about your doctor's appointment. We, we believed you about the dirt up your ass. Why would we not think you're telling the truth about this? Dirt up your ass. No, Garrett, it's not even worth explaining here. <laughs> I was if telling you see some him, rocks in the bed, don't ask any questions. Just don't I was telling them back in the day before I met you, 
Old boy took me to the park and had me on the ground, and rocks went up my ass. Okay, that's, I, 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 we talk about that later. <laughs> did, you, did they do the thing where you like had the bubble in your eye where you have to like? That, he, he hung up. He hung up. He had enough of you. <laughs> <laughs> molestation story. He drew, he drew the line at rocks in the ass. <laughs> could it so, could it be just the vibrations from her yelling next to his head for forty years? <laughs> uh, almost thirty. It could be. I probably knocked his ligament apart. So so. So, um, we at the doctor, right? So I go in the doctor and I'm sitting there with him and it's fucking sleeting and about to snow. And, you know, this was like a last minute thing. He literally went in for an eye exam and they told him, they was like, uh, we, he, cause he was having floaters. He said, it looked like it was always raining in one eye. So I'm like, nigga, if it raining in one eye and the sun is shining, <laughs> something might be wrong with your motherfucking eye. Nigga, I'm about to make you a Why did Toto just start playing in my head? <laughs> Do, 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 do. The rain's down in Africa. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> fuck y'all laughing at? <laughs> it's just so fun. <laughs> it looked like it was raining in one eye. <laughs> yeah, he was having floating. He said it kept raining in one eye, and he would knock the rain away, and it wouldn't be shit. It would just rain. It never rains in Southern California. We're raining in his fucking left eye, okay? <laughs> He left I had all raindrops. Just taking rain axes, high drops. <laughs> so, raindrops uh, keep falling in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all gonna leave my motherfucker up alone. <laughs> so, shut the fuck up. <laughs> so, well, I, I get him an eye appointment and he tell him, hey, it keep raining just on one side of my head and something wrong. So I'm like, man, you should have been said it been raining in one eye. So, uh, uh, we can't get him no windshield wipes. So I said, you need to go to <laughs> You spray rain X in his eye and hope for the best. <laughs> so I tell him, I said, you need to go and uh, let me make your eye appointment. So they made him eye appointment. And they looked and they like, holy shit, we see something back there. So that night they was trying to get him into a, a, a ophthalmology. I don't know what the fuck they call it. Optometrist. Yeah, the nigga with the brown grill at the bottom. <laughs> and so, um, and so, and I knew he was full of shit, y'all. He was Indian too, so you they think everybody eat dirt because they ain't got number saying over there. Okay. So, <laughs> Mark, racist, but that is not that's... fucking racist. People eat dirt over there. Kids eat dirt everywhere. So, uh, they they do they do their little shit right, and they tell them they say you need to come first thing in the morning to get over to the doctor's office. So make it long because I already told y'all about you know how his eye fucked up, it rained in his eye. So I'm concerned. I need to drive him right. I get to the doctor's office and um, we get him all checked in and shit. And I'm sitting now. So I get ready to go up in the back. And the lady was like, she started whispering to me. And I said, what? What would you say? She said, we need you to go sit in the car. And I said, for what? <laughs> oh, what you want me to go sit in the car for? She said, because we trying to keep the coronavirus down. I said, bitch, I ain't got no coronavirus. I said, well, come on, we don't want too many people here. I said, ain't nobody out here with me, bitch. Who am I in fact? Myself? I'm the only person <laughs> in the motherfucking lobby. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? And I felt like they were picking on me. So they're old to myself. Well, <laughs> no, it's just a global pandemic. It's not you. No, trust me. but it wasn't nobody out there. <laughs> but another old ass couple. So she, she literally said, if you're not being seen by the doctor, we asking you to wait in the car. I said, well, you ain't them two niggas right there to wait in the car. That old nigga ain't going back there with the old white people. I said, he ain't going. Who being seen by the doctor? That's what I want to know. Did you ask him not to go back there with her? Because both of them niggas on, on, on motherfucking walkers together going back there in the back. <laughs> so why the fuck y'all trying to put me out? My motherfucking hub got raindrops in one eye, bitch. I'm sitting right here to find out what's going on with the raindrops in my hub my eye. So... Long story short, you went to the car. <laughs> Fuck you. So I'm sitting there. So, you know, they always got one bad bitch in the office to handle the knuckles. I'm going to keep it real. They got one white girl that ain't scared of shit who probably get black dick who thinks she bowed it, bowed it. So they sit that bitch out there to me, right? So I knew I knew it was a white bitch back there that, that, that get that black dick, think she black. And I'm going to tell this bitch something, you know, who know how to bounce their head like we do. So... <laughs> <laughs> Make a long story short, they sent her out there. And she said, she said, <laughs> ma'am. And I said, uh -uh. yeah. She said, we're going to need you to sit in the car. It's the rules. I said, who rules? Because you didn't ask that old man and that old white woman right there to motherfucking go sit in the car. I said, bitch, my husband, I going out. And I said, on top of that, I'm watching Narco Mexico. I ain't going <laughs> no motherfucking way. <world." laughs> 
I said, it's cold out there. And you ain't got no money to pay for no gas for me to crank my motherfucking car. I said, leave me the fuck alone because I'm in a good episode and they about to kill Chapo, bitch. <laughs> leave me the fuck alone. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> they about to kill Felipe. That's his name. They about to fuck Felipe up. I'm watching Narco Mexico. So I'm not going no motherfucking well. And that's what I told her. I said, if you want me out of here, you better go back there and tell me what's going on with my hub. I didn't get rain in. Call the police. Because I'm watching Netflix. And I put my motherfucking ear drunk thing back in. And I sat there like an evil black bitch. Like I was trying to segregate a lunchroom. Desegregate nah. or resegregate? What's desegregate? <laughs> <laughs> That's how fucking with me. That ain't. But I could. And don't get me wrong. I know this shit is real. And if it was like maybe 10 people in the lobby. Yeah, I would have got to believe. Wasn't nobody out there. But an old ass couple with two walkers who went to the back. And it was just me. I had already desanitized, desanitized my chair. I wiped that motherfucker from the head to the toe. I wiped the motherfucking arms down. I wiped the lamp down. I wiped the table down. You think I'm going to leave all that desanitized <laughs> shit to another nigga? <laughs> no. I said, bitch, did you not see me clean up that whole area for coronavirus? Yeah. And you won't put me the fuck out in the cold? Yeah, the rule follower in me thinks that's horrible. You, what are you doing? But then there's the other part of me that goes, everybody's overreacting a little bit. Like, it, yeah. Make it, put it yeah if, there was only, if, there was, if there were nobody else in there, I wouldn't have left either. Right. No, if it was maybe 10 people, I'd have got the fuck on. I'm right. like, all these old people, they don't need to be breathing whatever the fuck I'm carrying. I don't want to kill nobody. And I damn sure don't want them to kill me. I would have went back to my motherfucking car. Yeah. It was literally me. And then the old couple came in and they took them straight to the back. And I said, no, nah, bitch, that ain't what y'all going to do to me today. I'm watching Narco Mexico. And I sat there. And you, and you didn't get the police called on you? No. Actually, they asked me to come to the back because when they found out my hub had them worms in it out with the, with the raindrops, <laughs> they asked me. Drop top. <laughs> up in the he wanted me to see his eyeball, <laughs> and that motherfucker would lift it up like a London Bridge. <laughs> London Bridge. Yeah, his fucking detachment, his retina. That the motherfucker would lift it up like electrical wire. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck? And the man said that when he started telling us all that shit, he ate some dirt. They got Paris. So I was like, you a goddamn lie. You, know, you can't believe everything the doctor said. I mean, one time I was pregnant, right, and so. <laughs> I love these stories. <laughs> be good. I, I was pregnant, right? And so uh, the doctor was a quick ass doctor, right? So after I had my first abortion, they damaged my uterus, y'all, because they don't give a fuck. So I, somebody was practicing on me. So they damaged my uterus. <laughs> they so were when practicing I, on you? <laughs> yeah. Like a, game yeah. of, like a game of baby operation or what? <laughs> <laughs> they always practice on the poor. No matter what fucking color you are. They practice on the poor. The abortion graduation exam. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Baby's first abortion. Yeah. So fuck y'all. So they they fucking ended up cutting me too bad and then my, I got scar tissue on my uterus or my fallopian tubes, whatever. So when I met my husband, oh God, first black man I met that didn't have no kids, no baby. Mama drum, he could read back T, good job, credit card. I was like, oh my God, I need to have a baby by this nigga. Oh my God, I gotta, you know, I gotta make it work. I had been, we had been married by, by seven, eight years and no kids. I'm like, I need to have a fucking baby by this man. So I go to the doctor, come to find out, I got this thing called a, um, uh, uh, laparoscopy, I think that's what it's called. When they go in your neighbor and they, or they go up your vagina and they shoot down to your fallopian tube, and you could be right there on the TV and you can see your fallopian tubes, and they shot the dial up and they had a blockage on the right, and that 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 fucking dial went whoop, no nah, bitch, bye bye, and went back down. Oh. And you can see that on so TV. Is, I have like Spider Man in my mind. Is, uh, what is that? What uh, they're shooting? No, up there? you know the fallopian tube is like this right here, like a two P's connected not, to the back. Not familiar. Okay, no, well, he doesn't go that deep. I know, I know, I know. I know. Shut, up. <laughs> Shut up, Dion. So anyway, they shoot the die up in there, and they tell me my tubes are blocked. Oh, right, die. that's like die. Oh, yeah, you shoot the die, and the die came back. Then he said the right side of your tubes is blocked, so you can't have no kiss. I'm like fuck. So um, um, this is where black dick come in. Thank you, Jesus, for black dick. And so when the, when the <laughs> die went up in now, um. I think it kind of loosened whatever was blocking it because uh -huh. I went right home and got pregnant. Really? But the crack-ass doctor told me I couldn't have no children. So I got really sick during the pregnancy because uh, I have a wheat service and I need something called for um, uh, um, 
I think your service is great. <laughs> Can I get some service <laughs> around here? Shit, we can service, bro. <laughs> Don't you ever Who's let anyone is this? tell you that your service is weak. Can to I get country? some service around here? Fuck our service. Who don't wipe this table down? <laughs> Y'all so goddamn stupid. I get so tired of y'all fuck with my English. <laughs> so let me finish. I wasn't going to say nothing, but it's fake. I just look, Dion, when she does shit like that, we, Dion I just, and I look at each other every time to go, are we going to let this go or not? I was going to let it go because I knew what she was trying to say. Well, All I'm right. a weak service. Okay. The shit in your vagina. So I have to have a, uh, what's it called? A, uh, I forgot what the fuck it called, but they go in and they put a fucking piece of sheet into your uh, uterus to hold a baby in there. I forgot what they call it. That might be called like what a lavaroscopy is. I can't mesh remember. Mesh or something. No, it's not a mesh. It actually look like a piece of sheet. Because uh, I, I, I saved it one time from one of them babies. Gary and Juma had to have it. So um, I get really, really fucking sick with the baby. I had a baby before Gary Anna that died when uh, I, I gave birth at like four months. And um, make a long story short, uh, what the fuck was I saying? <laughs> you had a piece of sheet oh, in your vagina. Oh. So I, I got, got really, really sick. sick. Mm-hmm. I got really sick. And so the doctor didn't know what the fuck he was doing. And he literally came and told me. He said, you ever had an STD? And I said, yeah. I said, I had gonorrhea. She said, he said, I think gonorrhea came back. I said, nigga, what? <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> the reunion tour starring <laughs> Gonorrhea live in Miss Pat's Pussy. Did, did, Gary, <laughs> did Gariana give you the gonorrhea? No. no she I born. didn't have gonorrhea. I only I been with the same man for like 10 years. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking Sunday, about? Sunday, he Sunday, Sunday. He said, he said, I think that's what's wrong with you. Your gonorrhea came back. I said, well, he ain't got gonna real. How the fuck gonna real? <laughs> he didn't have gonna real. That fucking quick ass doctor almost killed me. Just hook Garrett now. <laughs> For real? <laughs> <laughs> Garrett ain't never had an STD. I was like, Doctor, uh, Doctor Dan Claire. That was his name. I should have known he was shit, Doctor Dan Claire. I said, How do gonna real come? He said, I don't know. Maybe it was in your bloodstream. No, nigga. <laughs> Just no. hanging out like it's at the bar. <laughs> like it's a parasite. <laughs> I got motherfucking pill and cylinder shot. So I know the shit was gone. And when you got gonorrhea, your pussy feel like the 4th of July. So I know I ain't had no motherfucking gonorrhea. He was a quack ass doctor. <laughs> He was a quack. They ended up taking his fucking license. But he was good. All my friends that couldn't have kids, he helped them bitches got pregnant. Was he fucking them? <laughs> <laughs> No, he wasn't. Is that why he lost he was his unstopping license? them bitches tubes like he unstopped mine. So after that, <laughs> after that, I, I had a baby before Gary on him that uh, it was a miscarriage. So I had to have this baby. I still got her picture back there. My husband hey, looking at it. He said she like an alien because her mouth was stuck together. Her eyes was still stuck together. And they just gave her to me after they had her. And, you know, she just died in my arm. And then they ended up taking her wherever they took her. And I went to sleep. And so, I'm the one that's always telling sad stories right. on the podcast. That's not sad. Yes. And so then I ended up getting pregnant with Gary on him. Right after that. Another sad story. <laughs> <laughs> Careful what you wish oh, for. Yeah. And then after Gary on, I had June bug and I tied my fucking tube. <laughs> but the whole issue, what I'm trying to say, doctor be lying the ass off. <laughs> Mother told me I had a real currency gonorrhea. How the fuck I had gonorrhea? I ain't fucked the nasty nigga in yields. Gonorrhea came back like an ex. Hey, can we talk? I just, <laughs> I realized that, you know, I didn't treat you so good the first time. <laughs> oh, yes, you did, bitch. You burnt. <laughs> you ever had an STD? No. You? No. Jimmy? What? Judge you on this? Well, you're judging us because we haven't had an STD. We had safe sex. We had guests uh, in San Francisco that had STDs. God. <laughs> Good God. Yeah. Maybe we do should you take think a, they was for real? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's take, yes, a quick, take a quick break and come back and talk about 50. This 50th episode. Oh, yeah. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back to finish talking about the 50th episode. I totally think those guys, one of our highest rated episodes out of the 50 so far was San Francisco. I think it was episode two where we had the two gay guys on and they were on a date and they were... Episode 43, A Date yeah, to Remember. A Date to Remember. It was one of the fun... They were such nice guys. Oh, yeah. If you guys are listening, we miss you guys. We love you. And we hope you got that hot dick taken care of. Yeah. And he had... Was it gonorrhea? Or yeah, he said, yeah, gonorrhea. gonorrhea. Yeah. Yeah. 
and it was his first date. Imagine being on a first date and you get called up on stage and admit to a crowd of 100, 200 people that you are you have an STD. Oh, like, they said it with no shame. And that was their point. They said right, exactly. they, they were trying to bring They're awareness trying. to testing. People need to get tested. Well, you go get tested <laughs> when, you're, when you got gonorrhea. Gonorrhea is hot, nigga. It felt like you stuck your vagina in a fucking heater. <laughs> like fire ants? Yeah, maybe fire. That shit burns like a motherfucker. I still think, was it Rest in Peace Cakes where you talked about lighting your mom's grave on fire? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's one of the craziest stories I've ever heard. I don't think I've ever laughed. So you know, much. they asked me not to come back, and I ain't been back. What to the grave? Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't planning on going. I, I truly believe when people die, you should leave them the fuck alone. Yeah, yeah. I told my kid, I want to make a tape and say, "Don't y'all nigga be coming out there fucking with me, bitch? I'm rent free. Leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> just, I can't just, give you no more. Detected. Yeah, I can't not kill. I can't give you no more cash app, nigga." <laughs> I can't cash out none of y'all niggas. I'm out this bitch. <laughs> I think one of my favorite episodes isn't on the main feed. It's in the Patreon feed. So if you're a patron, you get two extra episodes a month. And it was, we, we were Join doing, now. we were doing a word associate or what, what word would you like to see come back? Do you remember what word? Uh, uh-uh. Do you? Well, oh man. You'd what have... was the fucking Quisha? Oh, what was that word that we never ever heard of? I think it's in the title. Did I uh, look at? Oh, did I? Did I? Uh, can you look in the Patreon? Uh, you'd have to look it. Look it up. My phone's being used for the video. Oh, can you look it up on my phone? Yeah. Here. <laughs> good grizzma tizzle. That's or, what good, it was. Good grizzma tizzle. Good grizzma tizzle. Good grizzma yeah. tizzle. <laughs> never heard that. So D, I go first, <laughs> and I'm like. I'd like, you know, G. Willikers. And then <laughs> Dion was like, you know. Jive I'd, turkey. Jive turkey would be great. And then what about you, Miss Pat? Good grizzled tizzle. And I, <laughs> Dion, I don't know that we've laughed harder than on that episode. <laughs> that was the funniest shit because I've never heard that before in my life. <laughs> you motherfucker ain't heard none of this shit I be saying. You said, but let's bring back words. And then you're going to say a word no one's ever heard of before. And then you called like 10 people and nobody <laughs> ever heard of it. Good grizzled Called, tizzle. Miss Jenny was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm telling like my if you if you notice, like if I don't know if you guys noticed, like even with my kids, my big kids, my grown kids, the ones I had out of my vagina, we say bado. <laughs> Have y'all noticed that about us? No. We say bado. And bado is not a word. And like my husband asked me one day, he was like, he was wearing my face, said, Why do y'all say bado? And I was like, Don't nobody say bado. He's like, that's all y'all say is Bado. Mm-hmm. We, I say Bado. I be like, you know what I'm saying, Bado, over there, Bado. And I don't know what the fuck it means, <laughs> but it's just, it's a word my whole fucking family use. They be like, I kill you, Bado. <laughs> <laughs> is it like an exclamation or what? I, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it's just Bado. How you spell it? I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. You got him. Not at all. Yeah, I, I doubt if I, were, it. if I was typing it, how would I type it out? B B U B D O T H O. Let me ask Ashley because she said B D O too. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> the yeah. episode that I think I knew that this was going to be a smash hit podcast was the. When you two explained that documentary to me. Oh, episode three. Yeah. It was like, I think it was your first episode, dude. It was my first episode. Yeah, what was guys, the name of the episode? Uh, uh, to catch a... It, oh, uh, it was... Uh, it was... Uh, Abducted in Plain Sight. Yes. Oh, God. That was something else. That was the franchise starter right there. Yeah, that was. It was really fun. I tell you what, though. I always ask people who join and people who message me, I always ask them what's their favorite episode. And Granddaddy Long Legs and Illegal Knees are always... The two that people mention every single time. Yeah. Like this is that those are the episodes that got them hooked and yeah. kept coming back. Well, good. Cause I, people thought I was crazy. Turn it up. When I was saying that granddaddy, we call spiders the uh, granddaddy long legs. You gotta you gotta put your headphones on. Hey oh, Ashley. Hi Ashley. This is Chris Spangler. Hi, who are all these white people? Oh. <laughs> uh, stop oh, being racist. I didn't her. raise you like that. <laughs> Gay daughter. Uh, he's still white. That don't mean nothing. D- nobody's talking about people races. I don't fucking. Oh, wait. wait what, what you want, coronavirus? What you want? <laughs> <laughs> Look here, boy, Diger. We want to ask you a question. <laughs> What's a Diger? <laughs> I, I probably have the answer. Boy, Diger. Um, yes. Uh, oh, I was telling them that our families say Bado, right? Yes. 
So can you spell Bado? Because I have no idea what the fuck Bado mean and how to spell it. And I figure I would call a college dropout. <laughs> so okay. Kanye. Number one, at least I made it to middle school. So let's talk about that. <laughs> oh, I want to say fuck you, and I should have let you get molested. Oh, jeez. Uh, ah, it's fine. Anyways, that'll never happen, honey, because I got the biggest dick. But anyways, <laughs> I'm assuming that Bazo is like the way I spelled it from how you guys said it was B U T T H O, like but or D O E if you wanna like speak slang like colloquialism. So It's colloquialism a language? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It is a language for black people. It's called ebonics. <laughs> it's just a big word for ebonics. I learned that in college when you paid for me to drop out. Actually, so the way what... that she said that <laughs> is colloquialism and language. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta watch the video when she said it. That was so... the most polite shit talking. <laughs> uh, All righty then, bougie bulldogger. Um, yeah. Anyway, you go get that radio show. Let me tell you, <laughs> I'm talking to my daughter. And this is how we you're, talk. Cause you're talking we, to your son. Uh, no, bitch. <laughs> you want a dick so bad. You used to have a period. I don't know why do you stuck a tampon sofa up your back to stop your period. <laughs> that ain't got nothing to do with you still a girl. I still got a period. I know all about them, child, because that don't stop me. Period don't stop nothing but a sentence, baby. Okay, uh, excuse I, I me. I don't want to hear this gay <laughs> shit. I don't want to hear this gay shit. In Jesus' name we pray. I need some holy hey, water. Jesus, bye. I don't even bring Jesus up. You don't I, even know you. You are not on the main line. Stop lying. <laughs> I am on the main line. I don't know the fuck you talking about. Your name is not written in the book. Ms. My Dad, name I is written you. in the book. Your name ain't written in the book. According to the Christian, you eat vagina, so you ain't gonna make it. <laughs> that don't say that in the Bible. Sorry. It do say that in the Bible. You ain't never read it's, it. It's, it's, it's Solomon Gamaliel. <laughs> <laughs> Solomon and Gamaya, the That's remix. Right. <laughs> what they name? Like Solomon and Gamora? <laughs> yeah, it's them right. niggas. It's them niggas. Solomon Gamora. <laughs> you ain't gonna make it, baby. <laughs> he destroyed your land, and you ain't getting into heaven, according to them. Now, who ain't you know, on the it wasn't main just line? Gay people there. You know, it wasn't just gay people there. It was all types of people there. It, and they weren't even considered gay. Like, you have to read because I know you don't know how to do that. So, ask Gary. Oh, bitch, to I know how to read. read. I know how to read. Says. I know Solomon Gamoria was, was the gay shit. <laughs> no, it wasn't. That sounds That's like a Godzilla monster. <laughs> <laughs> Gamoria. <laughs> <laughs> Now, like this virus you got to get. <laughs> I ain't about to get no virus. Where the fuck are you at? I'm inside of some vagina where I deserve to be. Oh, you so face. fucking I gross. quarantined myself inside some pussy. So what you want? Don't curse in front of me, whore. <laughs> no, pussy is not. You pussy gay is not whore. A curse word. <laughs> pussy is a gay word. I mean, it's a cuss word. Don't you fucking curse in front of me. It's not a curse word. Don't you, you curse in front of me. Now apologize no, to your yeah, mother. I'm not <laughs> no, ma'am. <laughs> you are not mother dearest. Bye. <laughs> uh, all I do for you, bitch, I hope your top teeth fall out. <laughs> Girl, I ain't worried about that. <laughs> God, I ain't worried about none of this stuff you talking about. Why is you calling me? What do you want? We I was... pay my own phone bill now. I'm grown. I can hang up. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a common theme when Miss Pat, somebody, you should call someone in her family. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> we we'll celebrate my 50th podcast and we wanted to ask you how to spell but don't. That's what you're doing to celebrate your 50th podcast and spell a word? Well, we reminiscing, motherfucker. <laughs> Okay, well, that's not a reminiscence. You say that word every day. A reminiscing is something that happened in the past. You say that word today. <laughs> no, no, we reminisced about rocks in her ass in the graveyard. <laughs> she don't know anything about the rocks. Have in you my ever ass. heard anybody say good grizzle tizzle? Yeah, all the time. Well, in our family, not like outside of our family, no. <laughs> yeah, so it's a made up. What, shit. what is That's good grizzly tizzle mean? It just means like, like for white people, like holy cow, like that, like good grizzly tizzle, like right. holy cow. <laughs> that that makes sense because when I ask what does good grizzly tizzle mean, she goes, I don't know, good grizzly tizzle. <laughs> 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 it's like you just know when to use it, but you don't know what it means, basically. Right. Where you at? Um, at the salon, get my hair done. I dyed my hair so pretty. I'm gonna send you a picture of it. I look good as hell. Oh, uh, Ashley, do not curse in front of me. My hell is not a curse. Word. Hell and pussy is fucking <laughs> vulgar. 
fucking vulgar. What? <laughs> just that was not regular vulgar is fucking vulgar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to hell. I am. My heart is purr and good. Purr? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, she's a kitty cat. She's got a heart full of purr. Purr. <laughs> You got nine lives. That's why your ass ain't going to heaven. Right. <laughs> then I got a nipple blowed off. I got shot in the head, hit by a dump truck. I had fleas, rabies, gonorrhea, still here. You got hit by a dump truck? Fuck you, Chris. And fuck you, Ashley. <laughs> what have you had? Every time I, every uh, time you come around me, you smell like plastic. <laughs> That's because I'm out here giving his dick out. Whoever wanted while hey, we're second house for quarantine, you come cannot see me. come back to my house. <laughs> You're very disrespectful. I I cannot. I hope you lose. I hope the airline lose your dicks. Hey, wow, Delta, if you listen. <laughs> You don't wear them on the plane. Don't you don't trust them airlines, girl. You're going to be dickless in Seattle. Don't check your dicks. <laughs> well, if my penis gets coronavirus, I'm okay with it as long as I ain't got it. Oh. <laughs> How often are you sanitizing your dildos? Are you dishwashing uh, them or are you hand washing? Hand washing in between people. Oh, that's a lot of people. Is that okay for you guys? I didn't say how many people it was. I'm just saying I hand washed. I'm more concerned you're at the that that you're out and about and not quarantined. What are you doing down there? No, I'm not out and about. I'm yes, you is. You out no, and about, you nasty. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, Ma, you don't went grocery shopping five times. You've been more out and about than everybody else. You've been to Nordstrom Rack, Burlington, and everything else. You I have not been anywhere in the name of Jesus. I go to the grocery store. <laughs> Why are you putting you on definitely, this Christian You definitely act? haven't been anywhere <laughs> She's gonna, in the name of Jesus. She's gonna That's tell the him. most accurate thing you've ever said. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you are right. <laughs> I have not been anywhere. These I've been two are about take- to call the governor and tattle on each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been taking care of myself. I only go to the grocery store like the government said and come back home. Okay, and I just came to get my hair done and I go back in the house. I'm not out in the streets. I'm not going to the club. I'm not doing nothing. Like, I'm just You chilling. telling a nasty lie. <laughs> why are you talking to me like you're a sex phone operator? Like, why are you on my phone? <laughs> You sound gross. You sound like a man woman thing with a beard or something. I'm not interested in this. Not turning me on. I'm not trying to, bitch. I'm your mama. <laughs> well, you sound like you're trying to be sexy, but you sound like a man at the same time. <laughs> Just not sexy to her. Uh, oh, yeah. She no. don't like men. She don't like me. No, I don't like men. And she's a man, so no, I don't like her. (laughs) (laughs) Thank God, (laughs) motherfucker. I'm your mother. (laughs) Don't fuck me. Please don't fuck me. Don't deal, though, your mama down. Everyone, my mother is transitioning, and that's why she sounds like a man. (laughs) (laughs) Bitch, I ain't transitioning. I ain't transitioning to shit. I keep it dick. I I sure did have some gray hair, but I got it off, bitch. Okay, so you could curse at me and call me all kind of names, but I can't. I am the mother. I had you. Unfortunately, you did. You could have just swallowed me and saved us all this trouble, but instead, (laughs) I'm here. So, wasn't sucking dick when you came along? Yes, you was. Stop lying. No, I was not. When did you start doing that? None of your motherfucking <laughs> business. Well, this is something we could talk about. We've never talked about this before, and I'm very interested. Uh, to I'm know. not. Uh, uh, cold dicks and real dicks have no room for each After other. After she had Nike, she was like, I'm sucking dick from hell. <laughs> <laughs> she was probably still having sex with my kids. Probably while he retired, and they was probably putting that penis all across his head. He got all kind of mushroom stamps at the top of his head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the fuck is mushroom stamps? You should know you're straight. I read about it. <laughs> <laughs> the hood of a penis looks like a mushroom. So what yeah. do you do to the kid? I don't fuck children. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, it's a, it's we ain't even going to ask you because your dick baby. ain't even reaching the womb up there. Oh, <laughs> are you talking to Chris? My dick is bigger than yours. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody dick in that room bigger than mine. I can guarantee you. Uh, that. One more time. Mom. Do not curse. Well, if I can't say dick, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> she took her dick and went home. <laughs> I think she was saying that you were getting fucked so often when you had an Ikea in the womb that it left, it left him with a dented head like a golf ball. Yeah. Yeah. I, no, I don't think that's true at all. I don't remember that. I don't think I've ever had sex with a pregnant woman. They say it's the best vagina. I wouldn't know. Who's they? 
people? <laughs> the, the board of pregnant sex doctors? I don't know. That's what I they think say. She's calling him back. Hello? What do you want? Dickity dick dick dick. <laughs> 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 she just dig down her mom. <laughs> my kid's so goddamn stupid. <laughs> my kid's so goddamn stupid. I wonder where they get it from. <laughs> just a bunch of shit talkers, all of them. <laughs> they learn from the best. You calling her back? Yeah. She ain't gonna answer. Oh, okay. Hello? Well, that explains a lot. Why, did, why is Ash, why is Ashley gay? I don't know. She got screamed bull dagger every morning at six a.m. by her mom. <laughs> By crazier. Uh, uh, talk about uh, imprinting. I only call my gay daughter bull dagger, so I don't want to hear that bullshit about I don't like gay because it's an inside joke. She like for me to call her that on the low. Or on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Tens of thousands of What's another episode people talk about a lot? Uh, Holy Polio. It was yeah. another very popular one. What, what happened on that one? That was the story of you were afraid of getting sick or I was sick. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, that was like 30 episodes ago. I know the, disc- maybe read the description, pull that up. Let's see here. What, what episode? That's the it? problem. I, I try to title it. So it's funny, but then the, it doesn't give a good description. Holy polio was episode 19. We, we did that in August. Wow. What was it talking about? I don't mean to play it. I'm trying to read the description. Miss Pat takes oh not vaccinating kids. That's what oh, yeah. Oh, that's where they cuss your ass out. They cuss me out. Oh, that, wasn't that what you talking about? They would uh, you should vaccinate your kids. Yeah. Who cussed me out? You People got mad about that. Kids. People was like, I'm leaving, Miss Pat, because you, uh, you said we should vaccinate your kids. I ain't said a motherfucking thing. I'm just giving you my opinion. We're not doctors around. We are two comedians and a white boy. We just <laughs> <laughs> you all, we. I know. People should not confuse this podcast for medical advice. <laughs> yeah, we do what you want to do. If you got gonorrhea and you choose to sit around with it for two extra weeks, I'm just going to tell you it's hot. I can't tell you what works for you. I'm just telling you i don't know shit apparently I'm just, you can't get rid of it if it comes back yeah <laughs> you may be a medical miracle yeah dumb you, ass doctors i mean you and then you know i i tell people all the time you can't even you can't just go about what the first doctor tell you always get a second and third opinion like that man say them worms eat my husband I, like nigga please whatever <laughs> you know but we're not doctors. We just give you all opinion. That's that's what it is. And y'all right. get mad at some shit. Real, you got a long piece of white hair right there. Really? Where? That might be your cat. No, you turning. Oh, yeah, I got gray hairs on my beard. Oh, I see that. So, um, you know, we just we just it's a podcast. She we thought it was fun. cat hair, Dion. She <laughs> thought I had cat hair. I on my really face. did. <laughs> this is the, this is what she thinks of me. I you mean, walk, so, walking around. Do with you cat kiss hair. your cat? I don't know. Yeah. <gasps> Not in the mouth, though. No. Oh. No. Just like your little peck on the forehead. Oh. Yeah, I don't get it. Um, people kiss their animals. I don't understand that shit. Do you understand that a cat lick his ass? Yeah, but so does Ashley. And you, you kiss her. <laughs> you have not lick never her seen me kiss Ashley. <laughs> you will never <laughs> see me kiss Ashley. Are you a germaphobe? No, but I ain't kissing no cat, and I ain't kissing no dog, and I ain't kissing my kids in the mouth. Are you an animal person at all? Uh, that wince, that wince says no. <laughs> I mean, I like, when you I see like a dogs. chicken get choked out, and then you got to eat them out <laughs> later. <laughs> Me, I don't care to own one, but I dogs used to be my thing. You know, I had a pup, pup, and we had one cat. Well, we had two cats: the Siamese cat that we tried to sell, my brother stole, <laughs> and then. What episode was that on? They're gonna find that's so funny. <laughs> There's so many great stories. 
Uh, yeah, my brother stole a Siamese cat for an Atari. Him, but he didn't stick around long. He didn't like the roaches we had. And uh, most cats don't. <laughs> yeah, and we had a my mama had a kitten one time that kept pulling on her curtain, and she threw that motherfucker out the door like she was crazy back then. Once back then, it wasn't no animal abuse, so she had picked that motherfucker up and said, You got to go, nigga. You up here climbing on my motherfucking curtain. We was already poor, so nigga, they're tearing up all goodwill curtain. She picked that little kitten up by the neck and threw that motherfucker out the door and said, Go on, find you somewhere else to stay. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so we didn't, we didn't, you know, I mean, I'm not a big animal person i think because i've always dealt with kids and, right. and they just cost so fucking much right. so i'm not gonna go in there and feed no kid and feed no dog and you know i you always got somebody in your bed family that pissed the bed so i ain't gonna get up no cat piss no human piss i'm already watching covers right now i just i just can't do animals but i, I don't have a problem with them i don't care to own them you gotta clean up they fucking hair and shit and you know and, and, you, and you gotta get them bad it's a lot of work you know i st- i really <laughs> stopped dealing with animals when you could no longer tell I'm up outside to a tree. <laughs> Chris looks befuddled. <laughs> you never should have done that in the first place. Uh, nigga, it was okay back in the day. Uh, you're right, yeah. It was okay. Not not like hanging a nigga, but you just tie him up and his bed was out there on the tree. So uh, when they stopped that shit, I don't even see why that's humane. I, I just remember going to my friend Matt's house and they had they had their two dogs. It's a poor Spike. <laughs> had just run around this tree so much and there was no grass. He was sitting in the mud all the time. I'm like, why do you even have a dog? I don't even like dogs. Like, why even have, you know, like, ugh. How do you not like dogs, but you like cats? Do- dogs are too much. I need you to get out of my face. But cats are dumb. They can't even protect you. At least a dog or bog, when they, when they motherfucking hear people coming, when cats see ghosts, they just get them humps in the back and he can't tell you nothing. <laughs> cats are low maintenance. And and they're kind of like dogs. They're driving me crazy right now because they won't stop following me everywhere. Like they're they're friendly. They're not used they love to it. being home so no. much. Yeah, so they're all over me because they're they love the attention. See, this, that's what I can't do. You rubbing all up against me. Leave. I mean, if you're going to do a catch, you might well get you a black bitch. At least her hair shed less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somehow I don't think cats and black women are equally the same. <laughs> I mean, if you want hair all over you, if you if a black woman with a bad weave, if that shit rub up against you, it's going to leave all yeah, kinds like, of Like spring. Chris can just go out to PetSmart. Uh, you got any black bitches in the back? <laughs> yeah, they, outlaw, they outlawed that in 1865. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? It's not that easy to get a black woman this <laughs> <laughs> like you can just go bring a squeak toy. Come here, black bitch. <laughs> I got this box for you to shit in. Hey, Don't my, leave your hair on my sofa. <laughs> my friend Cortland used to work with a uh, woman, work with an old black dude, right? And he used to call black women. He said, he said my friend, his last name Wiggy. He, he used to date to do the armor truck with the money. He, so the old the man trucks. would the Brinks truck. So he would he would drive, and the old man he'd be in the back, and the old man was like, Wiggy. He's like, what man? Look at that fine nigga bitch right there. <laughs> <laughs> nigga woman that's what he called him nigga woman nigga bitches i was like he was about 60 so he didn't bomb bodies at night time sounds like a romance novel <laughs> dion, dion we were sitting earlier <laughs> and dion just started like ranting about something and i was like dion like do you find yourself going into old man rants? Like I do it all the all time. All the time. Where I'm, I'm like, I'm turning into my dad. I'm turning into that old guy who yells, yells out that inappropriate thing. Like, when did you, Miss Pat? Like, as you've gotten older, when did you go? All right, I'm old now. Like, because you always say you're old, even though you're not. But like, twenty five. Really? Yeah, because I had like eight kids at twenty five. Twenty five is when it everything changed. I stopped partying. Literally. Really. The day of my 25th birthday, I was like, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. Well, I'm not a big drinker, but, you know, I got married really young, um, 19, 18, 19. And so I thought I had, I got my sister kids. I had custody of her kids for 10 years and I already had two kids. Then I had two kids by my husband. So here I am, uh, 30 years old with eight fucking kids. Jeez. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, about 30 years old with eight kids. And I'm just at home. Um. Uh, Shitty job working at Walmart, um, putting you know, getting up every morning, getting everybody to daycare, and I just felt really old. I remember sitting there, I was on section eight, and I remember sitting there saying, you know, one thing my teacher always taught me, Miss Troop, she said, Always dream, you know, like always dream. So I lived in this house. I don't think I ever told y'all this story. So I lived in this house in Atlanta and I had a section eight certificate and it was worth um 
$1,400 they were willing to pay my rent because I had eight kids. And I only got the Section 8 because my sister was on crack and I took custody of her kids. And so literally all they gave me was 300 and some dollars for four kids and fucking housing, which was yeah. Section 8. And I'm sitting there and um, my kids started to play sports in this community, which is a middle class black, lower middle class black neighborhood. And um, uh, my mind started to open up. And I was like, I want more. I'm tired of this same old bullshit, you know, being on welfare and, you know, not having shit. I forgot what the fuck I was talking about. Make <laughs> sure you realized you were old and. Then, oh, oh, yeah. oh. So I'm sitting there. Take that part out. But I'm sitting there with all of these kids and I'm like, I'm fucking old and I'm 30 years old. And I said, no, I'm no, I'm not even 30 years old. I'm 20. Oh, no, I had four kids. I had my two kids and my sister four kids, so I got six kids. No kids by my husband. None. I think I'm pr- maybe pregnant with Gary on him. I'm, I'm in my early 20s. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, I don't got shit. I was like, and then Miss Troop came into my mind and started to say, well, you know, just like, I felt like I was talking to my teacher. What do you see yourself? And I told myself that day, I said, before I'm 30 years old, I'm going to own this house. I didn't know how the fuck I was going to own this house, y'all. Because remember, I'm, I got reduced rent. Well, I'm going to be honest, it was free fucking rent. I'm getting like $1,200 in food stamps. I'm working a shitty-ass Target job. I'm working on getting my GED. I'm fucking nothing. And I just told myself, I'm going to own this house by the time I'm 30. I'm going to buy me a house. Because, you know, they tell you the American dream is buy a house. So I go to school and I become a medical assistant. I'm talking to this 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 fucking black power man one day. And um and um I'm telling him, I was like, I'm just working to get off section A and I'm a medical assistant. And uh I said I really want to own my house. And he sat me down and he said, It's funny how uh black people think the American dream is owning a house. I said, What the fuck are you talking about? That is the American dream. He said, he said, while we teach our kids the American dream is to own a fucking house, white people teach their kids to own a fucking McDonald's. He said, you ever thought about a franchise? I said, what the fuck is a franchise? I had never heard the word before. He said, when you own a McDonald's, I said, they let niggas do that. <laughs> now, when you call, call Jimmy Carter a nigger, <laughs> you can't so, have no McDonald's. <laughs> they got the tape. <laughs> so I started to open my mind, and I said, I just started to put shit together. And I said, I said, uh, I said, I'm going to own this house by the time I'm 30. And I did. I, I literally, I started doing vending and all some other shit. And I, mean, I, I, I started making money. And I remember telling my husband, I said, I want the old lady who owned the house. And this is how good people are. This is why I think I'm so open minded because my landlord was an old white woman, right? Her name was Gerda Bourne. I know she probably did now. But. Uh, I would go work at General Motors because I still had that nigga mentality. Uh, not nigga mentality. I had that fucking welfare recipient mentality where you think you're going to always get over right. So I go to work at McDonald's. I mean, I go to work at General Motors making all this fucking money, $22 an hour. Never reported. They caught my ass. And so I was like, oh, okay. So they said, you owe $8,000. Literally, my landlord went in her bank account and said, don't tell them this because I could get kicked out the program for renting my house and gave me $8,000 to pay my rent, my back rent back. I fucked around and did it again. And they wouldn't accept my money and they kicked me off the program. So at the time, the lady was getting like $1,200 for her house for me. So she said, pet, I like you so much. She said, she said, have you thought about buying a house? And I'm like, how I was going to do that? And this, and I never really talk about this lady. This lady, my landlord, an old white lady named Gerda Bourne said, well, you've been in my house for 10 years. And out of those 10 years that you rented this house on Section 8, I put $50 a month away in case you ever wanted to buy this house. Mm. And that fucking lady helped me pay my down payment on the house to buy the fucking house from her. Wow. To buy the fucking house from her. And at the time, she did own a finance. And she said, I do own a finance for you to get your credit all the way together. And she gave me a really good inspiration. I think it was like back then, probably like 5%. And, you know, I didn't really have, I wasn't making that kind of money. But she owned a finance. It, and she gave me two, three years to get my shit together. And I'm still in the house. And um, by this time. When I got my shit together, me and my husband went in and bought, rebought the house or how we did it and got it together. You know, we refinanced it and we, I put him on there. 
And I think that's why I'm so open minded because that was like the first other than the police officer in my neighborhood. That was the first like white person that I felt like really cared because I didn't have a lot of interaction with white people. But when she did that and she came to close them with that money, a cashier check and didn't never tell me she was saving fifty dollars a month out of all those years I lived in that house. And she owned like a lot of houses too. Cause she tried to get me to move in the other house. Like, well, I really like this one. And we never asked her to repair it. We always took it ourselves. I always paid for my own sterminator because the motherfucker had so many roaches when I first moved in it. And I never get when I closed and I was like, oh, I got a little money. I'm gonna fucking redo the kitchen. And she was so proud of me. And she was still calling check on me like periodically. And I wanna dial her number so bad. I think last time I dialed her number was disconnected. And I kind of know she's probably dead because she was like, like sickly and shit but she i always think of girdle i always think of girl because when miss troop came back in my head when i was like in my early 20s and said what you gonna do with your life and i was like i gotta do something i'm gonna fucking buy me a house and i was like i'm gonna buy me a house and then i'm gonna buy me a car i said you know just thinking of the fucking materialist and shit but i got i accomplished everything i went to work for general Motors and i accomplished everything i wanted yeah, your story is a lot of great people kind of going, you need to believe in yourself and then helping you get, get and, up. And that's what that's why I tell people about pulling yourself up by the bootstrap with a, uh, the whole American thing. You know, I tell people all the time on stage, and you know this, Dion, I was like, hey, that bootstrap shit don't work. I'm here because people like you help me, no matter what fucking color you are. I'm here because of casework. I'm here, those programs out there, everybody be talking about, oh, a Democrat don't never want to fucking work. I'm here to tell you those programs work. It's going to be thieving motherfuckers and anything that the government put out free. It ain't going to work for everybody. But if it's 10, if you got 10 people on a fucking government program and four of them come out with a success story, then that's a successful program. Because you always going to have people that ain't going to do right. You always have people that going to want to scheme. You always have people that just ain't going to just don't want to do right. Right. But ain't nothing you can do about that. So I, I don't know why I felt compelled to uh, fucking uh, share that story. She, the lady just popped in my head. But today, I still own that same house in Atlanta. Oh, that's cool. And when I wanted to give back, <laughs> I wanted to give back. I wanted to be the landlord. <laughs> when it, a story starts with, <laughs> oh, let me tell you. So I wanted to give back. I'm a landlord now. You can't tell me shit, Is right? This booty beads story coming up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I wanted to give back, and I said I moved here to Indiana, and I wanted to give back, and I said I want to rent my house on Section Eight because somebody gave me a chance, and this time the house got granted. Fucking. Part with floors. I don't fucking redid the whole house. So I move a Section 8 tenant in it. You know, that's based on your rent. Oh, this bitch was from hell. This ghetto bitch. This ghetto bitch never paid me the portion of the rent that she was supposed to pay, right? Right. On top of that, she wanted to move right after she moved in because the bitch was like crazy. So I wouldn't let her move. Get what that bitch did. That bitch went had her uncle stole all my copper out of my house. Not carpet. Carper. Copper. Copper. Yes. Tow my walls <laughs> down. Yanked are, all my fucking wires down. Tow my mo- Oh, I don't think I ever cried that hard over that. Because I worked really hard to get that house. I put... I put in, I added on to the house. I fucking, the house is off. It's about 30, it's about 3,200 square feet. It's got maybe, it's got four bedrooms with an extra fucking room out the back. The fucking... The fucking bedroom is bigger than this and that. My kitchen put together. It's got uh, it's got a living room inside of the bedroom, a whole kitchen inside of the bedroom. It's got custom cabinets, and this bitch tore my house up. I fucking boohoo, and I said that day on. I said, did you not know her well? Well, or? you don't know your tenants. You know they get on a program, and you kind of vet them, and you know you verify their jobs and shit. And at the time we was living up here, and I really wanted to work to rent the house, so she came along. She had her deposit, and her house only rent for well, at the time rent for a thousand dollars. And the bitch tore my house up, and I said, "Fuck Section Eight, fuck poor people." Fuck niggas. <laughs> <laughs> and I took my house off that program, nigga. I was like, because when I feel like when you own a program like that, it's to, it's to help you to learn how to live and eventually leave the program. But sometimes you get people. I got friends that have been on the program for over 30 years, which I don't understand. Why the fuck are you still get, need help with your rent when your kids are grown? But I ain't downing nobody because, you know, people have everybody got their own issues. I'm just glad I'm not on the program anymore. But after that bitch did that, I took my house off that program. 
luckily I only had four tenants. So she was the Section 8 tenant that tore my house up. I had like $30,000 in damage. Jeez. So at, before, after her, before her, I had a white bitch who was a stripper. Bitch tore my fucking $2,000 bag though. Never paid her rent. Just fucking lied. So I take this bitch to court, right? And I don't know how the fuck we got on this. But I take this bitch to court. And it's a special episode I can go over. I take this bitch to court. She showed up with all her rent receipts, right? Every rent receipt. But for the last four months, she was missing rent. So I said, bitch, I don't, I pay on time. I said, bitch, you can't pay on time when you ain't paid in four months. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? And the judge literally said, this is why people lose their houses because people like you. Get the fuck out of her house. Nice. So I put this bitch out, right? And then was I this moved. the white stripper bitch? The white stripper bitch with a black man. And, okay. and just her mama was paying her rent behind her back trying to keep her. I didn't know they were cocaine head. The motherfucking Junebug played ball with, her, with his son. The, the, her husband coached my son. So, so I moved them motherfuckers out. I don't fuck with people. You ain't got. I, I had. The, oh. Calm down. Oh. Slow down. Yeah, my heart beat fat. <laughs> so then I moved the booty, the booty bead bitch in. Now she works for. Uh, for uh, the transportation service on the line of model. Fucking Suva, making good money. And she had this no good piece of man with her. And I'm, I work with you. You could be late. I work with you because I've been in the same right, situation. Right. I care about people. I'm not going to just throw you on the fucking street. So this bitch decided to move. She lived in my house like three years. She decided to move. Well, she decided to move after her ghetto ass son. I go over there one day and this nigga smoking weed, throwing ashes out the motherfucking window. Don't knock my goddamn screen down. Now I'm like, nigga, get that goddamn joint back in the window. So. <laughs> Not put the joint out. Get it back in the house. Yeah, get it back in the house. <laughs> so. <laughs> nigga, I was pissed off. It's hard being a landlord. So I go over there. She moves out right. And then she got a deposit. This bitch, her butt son done took an axe to all my doors and chopped them motherfuckers up. So wow. I said, look, bitch, the doors are $65 each. Get over here and clean my house out and get my door, and doors fixed. Wait, wait. He took, like, like that movie... Here's Johnny. <laughs> yeah. So he was crazy. I don't know what the fuck was wrong with the summer. When he got mad, he wanted to take an axe and shit. So he done took an axe to my motherfucking trimming my doors. And so instead of them fixing, you know, putting the doors back up, I mean, or buying new doors. Getting rid of the axe. Yeah, That's they don't put it. They don't put it. I'm like, bitch, I, I'm not. I'm not a slum landlord. I butt? can't. They put putty in the yeah. axe hole. <laughs> <laughs> the axe hole. You're proud of yourself, aren't you? Yeah, he is. <laughs> Look at him. Yeah, he's gonna make this. That is the ghettoest shit I've ever he's heard. Make this who the fuck? First of all, who the fuck axes doors? Crazy Secondly, motherfuckers. <laughs> Secondly, to fix it, who just really gonna put some putty in here? So <laughs> they'll never know the difference. And then you don't paint it over, so the dough got a big ass lump like a motherfucking fake booty. <laughs> Just a big ass <laughs> forehead on the motherfucking door. Oh, make a long story short. Maybe you should have just let him keep the joy outside. <laughs> <laughs> he done knock holes in my wall, so we go in there to clean up, right, y'all? And so I'm in there cleaning up, and my husband tell me, I'm, I said, why are all these bees? And he's like, don't touch that. What the fuck is that? He like, them booty bees. Don't let the fucking booty bees. <laughs> she had all these motherfucking Mardi Gras looking bees that you pull out your ass, and they had these little ridges on the side. And I'm like, why they sharp on the side? <laughs> They were like little rubbery tips and shit. I'm like, what the fuck is this? So I go and I sue the bitch, right? I'm suing the bitch because I, I, 20 years ago, I whoop your ass. Today, I got to beat you like a white woman. I'm going to take you straight to motherfucking court. And we ended <laughs> up on Judge Brown with the whole booty beat thing and I fucking won. So that's my one, two. On, this is my third. So my third, when they still there, thank God they've been there like 12 years. Oh, God. We ain't even going to talk about them because they current. But at least I got a tenant. <laughs> And they're good tenants, too, you know. So when you go back to Atlanta, where do you stay? Hotel. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't stay in that neighborhood. <laughs> too bo too, you're too bougie now? No. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. You heard that? No. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was over there the other day. I was over there a couple of weeks ago, and uh, the fucking, they redid the high school. The motherfucking damn, they look like Plainfield High. I was like, finally, they using all taxpayer money for something. But that's that let you know. What that does is that lets you know gentrification is on its way. Yeah. Because my house is near the airport. Near the airport. It's a prime area. If you're a pilot, if you fucking anything you got to do with the airport, I'm literally five minutes from the fucking airport. You can see the planes. You don't really hear them, but you can see them. Right. So, I mean, it's a really good. When I first moved there, it was like playing field. So, now it's like Bankhead. You got to know what the fuck Bankhead is in Atlanta. But 
So, and I get phone calls. This is why I know something is going on in that community. I get at least, no lie, two phone calls a week. You want to sell your house? And I asked one lady, I said, what the fuck is going on? Everybody keep asking me to sell my motherfucking house. Yeah. I'm about to flip that shit. Yeah. Everybody. They were like, we'll give you cash right now. I said, nigga. I pay my mortgage. I don't want to sell my motherfucking house. Y'all keep calling. I'm going to hold my motherfucking house. Something going on. Y'all ain't tricking me this time, white people. Y'all tricked me when y'all moved out that neighborhood and left a nigga there. And I couldn't get up out of there. And then the bus came and all these crazy motherfuckers started moving around me. <laughs> I be going to motherfucking meeting with Sarah now. Sarah? <laughs> yeah, Sarah goes to all the meetings. You know when the fuck to get out. <laughs> she It's a memo they send out in the white neighborhood. Run! <laughs> Bullshit on the way! Y'all ain't leave me no goddamn more. I, you never tricked me again. Mm-mm. So, But I know something going on because I get... I at least twice a week. Would you sell the house? Hell no. I'm waiting to see why everybody's trying to buy the motherfucking house. Uh, so you're waiting to hold and then you'd sell it to have too much emotional attachment. I think I have a lot. It's my first property. Uh, it's my, it's, you know, it's me. That house really made me feel like I kind of accomplished the American dream. I bought a fucking house. You know, you talking about this little old girl from the West End of Atlanta with a GED welfare recipient. And I grew up and I bought a fucking house. So <clears throat> I think I have more feelings for that house than I do this fucking house. You know, yeah. and it was some. it's also something I would like to leave my kids. Yeah. You know, I, I really want, I don't give a fuck. I, I got a really nice house now. I don't care about leaving this because it's in Indiana, but I would really like to. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Did you hurt your feelings with that? Yeah. I would really like to leave that house in Atlanta to my kids because I yeah. work really hard for that house, even think, remodeling it. Do you think uh, Garrett and Gariana want to move back to Atlanta? Do you think they like it up here now? They, not Gariana, but my husband liked it. You know, we talk about it all the time. He said, as long as he can get somewhere where it's not too busy, like the city of Atlanta. So he would like to move out on the outskirts. He don't want to move to Alpharetta. So more like Noonan, Fabron area. I asked him, so so what do you think of Plainfield? He goes, don't tell Pat. I like it here a lot. (laughs) He He just told her. He he goes, it's it's quiet here. Why would I want to be around all those fucking people? He do. And that's the type of living he want. You know, I can see my husband, a big ass front porch. And and my husband is tight. He don't need no big old castle. Um, You know, just a normal side house that'll hold us. He'd never let you go too far outside. Hey, we don't need all that. Because the first thing you say, high ceiling. You got it. All the heat going to go up there. We got to pay for that heat we ain't using up there. So, <laughs> He's right. He's very right. He's like, it's there's no point. way we can get that heat to come down. They just waste the you fucking heat. You got to get a ceiling fan. Like yeah. That, uh... So um, I look at, I'm hopefully I can purchase a nice home in Atlanta. That's where I would like to be. And it's only because Indiana has been great to me. I love fucking Indiana. Um, I ain't going to say it's I a, it's, Indiana, it's a but, family place. But once that's done, you got to go. Well, it's my. I don't have anybody here. You know, I don't have a Miss Jenny here, or a Queese here, or fucking. You know, I can't just get together with people that I feel like love me because I don't have anybody here. I mean, other than wow, you two, Dion. motherfucker. Wow. <laughs> I me, mean, other than you two, motherfuckers, y'all the only two really that Dion up uh, before Chris came along. Be honest, who did I hang with? Yeah. You the only. Other than Dion, I never call anybody. Now I have you to call. Yeah. What the fuck you doing, Chris? So these are the only two motherfuckers in Indiana that I literally talk to every other day on the phone. I don't have one girlfriend in Indiana. Why do you think you never really connected with people here? Is it because the geo, like where you're living, it, it is like you're the person that walks out the front door and you want to be around people, or you, you just didn't connect with people, or what? So when I first moved here, uh, fourteen years ago. One thing I noticed about Indiana, like in the South, money separates you. Here, race separates you. Mm. And and I don't know if I ever told you this. I said, these black people in Indiana carry on like niggas. Like when I tell them I live in Plainfield, Plainfield, the police bad out there. Oh, I never live in Plainfield. <laughs> and I'm thinking, uh, I remember when getting here in like 2007, I got here in 2006, 2007, I'm looking at the news and the inner city school did not have air conditioning. I mm. couldn't fucking believe it. Even in the ghetto of the city of Atlanta, the kids had air conditioned school. Yeah. And I'm saying to myself, why the fuck wouldn't you want to move out of there? And so, you know, um, when, when I would tell people I live in Plainfield, the first thing they said, why you live around them white people? I'm like, I don't give a fuck about no white people. I'm living where the school system is good. I'm living where the taxes are good. That's the mentality that I had. Yeah. And, and I noticed in Atlanta with the people that I deal with, 
money separates you. Anybody can live next door to T.I. if you got the money. Yeah. You know, they're not scared to go. Black people ain't scared to go live in Cobb County, Smyrna, or wherever the white people are. It's more mingling er- pretty much everywhere. Here is. That's what I don't like about it. There's <laughs> no sections in Atlanta. It's like, where am I at? Oh, there's a crackhead over there and a $2 million house. Like, wait, huh? So, yeah, I think I think and correct me if I'm wrong, but here's my theory is like the North just we had no like the clan here in the 20s was mad at Catholics like that's because there weren't black people here like there, And if there were, they were segregated into over where IUPY is at where Madam Walker started her the first black female millionaire. And so as like the population increased, everybody was still segregated like Crispus Attucks is a famous that's where. Said Oscar Robertson mm-hmm. yeah. went to played high school basketball, and when they won the state championship in the in the fifties or sixties, like I and they wanted fifty seven, fifty eight, something like that. Yeah, and they wanted to have a parade. the The white mayor wouldn't let them, and so they just did a parade around Man Walker. So I just don't think interactions. I know for me, like we never interacted growing up with black kids in our school because we didn't have any. You yeah. Know? So, but I think in the South, it's probably so much. There's such a larger black population that intermingling between different races and cultures is much more prevalent than it ever was here. Well, I can say this as a black kid coming up in the ghetto. I didn't see a lot of white people either. But one thing about Atlanta, you go to these places to hang out like Broad Ripper. Broad Ripper is mainly young white people. Right. Young white people. Well. I don't see sections in Atlanta like that. It's young people, all races, Chinese, black, white. And that's what I love about the South. Yeah, it's also you know, a much larger city. Yeah, it is a much larger city. It is a much larger city. But still, you know, you like, Although you just. Population-wise, y'all are on the decrease. Wow. In Atlanta? Yeah, I looked it up. Indiana, Indianapolis is the 17th largest city. Atlanta is 37. Really? Yeah, because people are, they don't, they're not living within the city. No, they're not. Yeah. It costs them too much because right. of gentrification. The city of Atlanta, Texas have went up so fucking much. The mail just put something, a cap on it. Well, you can't raise like seniors or uh, taxes for like 10 or 15 years or some shit like that. There's a but, book, there's a book called White Flight. And I think it's literally about Atlanta and the the white people leaving the core of the city to the but suburbs. But they always let you run, black people running down and they come back and get it for cheap. But that's what I don't like about Indiana. I'm used to, I'm mean, like, as I go out, like in, in, like the comedy, the comedy scene here, we really don't have a comedy scene, but in Atlanta, it, you got to, you can go over here and the laughing skull and all white comedy, mixed comedy, whatever. And then you can go over here, all black comedy, but somehow they mingle together at some locations. So, I just, I just like diversity. There's div- not, I yeah. love yeah. diversity. We have a comedy scene. You just wouldn't want to hang out with them. <laughs> like, well, I mean, I like it. Well, is it? They I don't, don't blame her. That, that's <laughs> what, exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just not enough diversity here. You know, uh, it. I, I just wish. I wish like. I wish this. I wish it was other stuff for everybody to do. Yeah. You know, if it's a jazz night, it's just a black jazz night. Well, I just don't want to be around black people. I want to see everybody. I want to see Chinese people enjoying jazz. I want to see black people. I want to see what... I like all people. I want to sit and have a conversation cousin, with everybody. My cousin plays in a jazz band called Toy Factory. Um, and they play... On the west side, we should go. It's Wednesday. Well, back when shit gets normal. That that's sort of my question is how much have you tried? Because if you went to the jazz kitchen, that exists. Like, and and I just think you're like you're more comfortable in black culture. Like there are black restaurants here. There are black enclaves. Like no, here. I don't like the black restaurant here. I don't like them. Uh, uh-uh. they're not good. I mean, they're okay. They're okay, but it's like it's. <laughs> it's I don't just, think she. I, I think, I think, I think a, they'd I be think. the best fucking restaurant. She wouldn't like it because it's Indiana. No, I just think I just think it's more to do in Atlanta like okay when I was home uh, that's not a thought that's an accurate thing right yeah, there like, is more to do in it, Atlanta like, but, but people have to understand that Indianapolis is now on the come up like it is it, on it the come up it in is. the last 10 years look look yeah. what Plainfield have been in the last 13 years I've yeah. been here when I got here it was corn everywhere yeah. it's a CVS where the corn used to be now uh, <laughs> it's true um I just, I mean, Moving on up, CBS. Yeah. I just like, I, I just like them. being able to go out and do different shit. My husband don't, and you know, I would like to say, hey, I could. Own, I was like, if I'm in Atlanta, I there, could call it. My, Atlanta's an entertainment hub too, though. Like, yeah, it's. Got, so I think that's what I miss too, because I can say, Quish, come on, girl, let's go have a drink. It's Monday night. Let's go watch it. I've been in places where they fucking having a a fucking sing off or open mic singing on a fucking Tuesday night, and it's wall to wall pack. 
with all types of people. That's what I like. Yeah. I like being around every fucking body. That's what I like. I mean, this is the first all white neighborhood that I ever lived in, but I just like people. I, I don't give a fuck about. I want to sit down with the geeky ass white dude and have a conversation Why'd like, you I look at me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I He's do. Like I do on the Well, I, I will. And there is definitely something about white culture, especially in the suburbs, where it's very much like there's no front porches. Everybody builds back porches. It's I'm going to come in my front door. I'm going to shut my front door. I'm not going to talk to anybody. And I don't want to be bothered. I don't want you in my face. I just want to talk to my face. Like there's a very there's an introverted nature to suburban white people that I don't think is very helpful to suburban white people, which is why so many people like my neighbors, my neighbors around here. And I, I, I don't really know them. I mean, other than the Facebook page that's how you really know your neighbors but other than the lady next door that's a person that's the only person i ever really interacted with yeah you know like they don't just and i don't know it because they everybody know who i am they feel like they don't need the ball if i go outside hey miss pat you know some shit like mm-hmm. that but i don't have a girlfriend here i don't have nobody to just come and hang out with and that's what i miss like yeah. if i'm bored in the line oh miss jenny what you doing girl I'm come by and sit down have a cup of coffee drink i don't have that here like you that doesn't playing field. That, that that doesn't <laughs> exist where i grew up people yeah. don't they they did when i was growing up like so i the neighborhood i grew up is sort of downtown by where marsh used to be and they had a pool and so everybody in the neighborhood would always go to the pool and the parents would all get together and there was like a strong network of, of like that was my friends, my sister's friends, like everybody got together hanging out all the time. That doesn't exist now in a town like this. Part of it is just, I don't know what changed, but people I'm, change. I mean, I, I'm a little worried about this quarantine stuff that it's going to drive us even further into not connecting with other people. And yeah, you should know your neighbor. I was yeah. talking to one of the girls who's working on my one of the projects I'm working on, and she was like, "Pat, I live in this neighborhood, and I worked all my life, and now that I'm not working, uh, it's the first time that I realized I have not gotten to know my neighbor. Yeah. And she living like a million dollar neighborhood, and I don't care what neighborhood. It, you know, the Bible say you should love your neighbor. I would love to know my neighbor. But they literally throw their hands up. The first, yeah. the first house. I didn't move into a house until I was in sixth grade. We didn't get our first house till I was in sixth grade. And our next door neighbors were these two old white people, the Dobbs family. I don't know if they're still alive, but they were the nicest fucking people. Like when we first moved into the house, um, you could tell we didn't know shit about owning the house. We didn't know, you know, like they would be like, "Hey, you guys need help cutting your grass?" or like, you know, they would be the ones to say, hey, now it's time to cut your grass. You know what I mean? Right. We had an apple tree in the house. And I was just fucking, I hated this fucking tree because you could never eat the apples because they was always fucking rotten. So it was like, what's the point of having an apple tree if you can't eat the fucking apples? They just fall from the goddamn tree and they got bees and they smell. So one day we were like, fuck this apple tree. <laughs> we fucking picked all the goddamn apples off this goddamn tree. And we just out there busting them in the street. <laughs> Because we didn't fucking know any better. We, we were ghetto kids. You know, there was no other kids in the neighborhood. It was an older neighborhood. And we, my dad comes home from work and he sees all these fucking apples. <laughs> and he's like, you niggas don't get all these goddamn apples. Up. And see, Miss Pat, that's why gentrification happens. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't know no better. We was bored. We didn't have shit to do. We, we hated that goddamn tree. One thing that I've learned just kind of being around your house and your family is it's way more social and it's way more communal. And I think, so I, I was having this conversation with this other libertarian and they were like, you know, we, we need more black libertarians so we can reach out to more black people. I go, you don't understand. What you need to do is go be friends with a black person. Because when you do that, uh, like when I start talking about individualism, white people hear, yeah, that's right. Because that's how they live their lives. But I think for you, you hear like an affront to what you, you, you like, you, you live a very, com- you live a communal life that... I don't have never really grown up with. And that Mm -hmm. I think has for my generation as we've grown up and we have no community, it really has disconnected us. Part of the internet, the internet Internet. can help and help and hurt because you can find community in cool places like our, our group, but it also completely takes away your ability to like sit and interact with a a group of people. Yeah. There's like your life. And I think the black community, there's a lot that, People can learn from the black community. That's one thing. Like you were talking to me the other day, you go, black people aren't worried about the economy. We've been poor forever. We'll be poor yeah. forever. Like all the, of my there's white no friends, economic, no economic stress because we'll just get through it and we'll have fun while we're doing it. Yeah, and I because I was telling him three 
before a white comedian come, oh my God, is this in the world? What are we going to do? And I was like, it's, and I, start, I was like, let me call Chris. And I said, it's white people are calling me stressed out. But b- my black friends are down in Atlanta throwing fucking barbecues. And I'm like, <laughs> they don't give a fuck about a recession. What we say is, hey, welcome to being black, motherfucker. Mm-hmm. This is how we live every day. No. That's how most black America live every day. So we, I think black people have learned to cope where we used to talk. We don't give a fuck about the economy. When you start talking about the economy, we, we, it just don't register with us because mm-hmm. we feel like we live in paycheck to paycheck. So the economy ain't never affected us any fucking way. Right. You know, I grew up poor as fuck. My parents never talked about the economy. You hear Gary Anna talk about the economy. You hear my husband talk about the economy, but I'm a person that never gave a fuck about the right. economy. So, you know, this shit here, I'm going to get through it. I'm okay. I'm not stressing, but I had three or four white people call me and they was really like in a panic. What are we going to do? Are we ever going to go back outside? Oh, how are we going to eat? <laughs> yes. What the fuck yes. is wrong with you? In like three weeks, is, everybody's going to go, this, I can't take it anymore. Everybody's going to go back and we're going to get right back to where we were. This is not yeah. the end of the fucking world. Yeah, it's but not fun. one black person. I look on Facebook and Quisha doing hell and the fucking kids running around the house and niggas in Washington Park in Atlanta throwing Bible you motherfucker acting like that at a club everybody black having a good time but the white people that i know who call me who's comedian is stressed the fuck out and i'm like calm the fuck down it's called black america nigga you gonna be all right i think white white culture is very consumer driven and it's yeah. about accumulating stuff and yeah, so, so y'all can stun on your neighbors that's your thing yeah you know i was just, it's funny uh, this is gonna be a great podcast because we have never done a podcast this long but i was telling i was telling my friend the other day i said i live in a, a upper class white neighborhood and i don't like to say white and black but i i it's funny because i was talking about materialistic thing and i said it's funny like when you see and this is just true i think this is this is my opinion when you see White people are materialistic like black people. Black people are flashy with they shit. They're very flashy. Like if you see a white woman with a Louis Vuitton purse, you don't think twice. You see a black bitch like a black bitch with a Louis Vuitton, you automatically think she got some money or it's fake. You automatically think that shit. That's why black bitches don't get jacked for their pocketbook because you might get a fake one. <laughs> <laughs> But white women carry fake ones too. But as society have trained us that their shits are real. Their shits like I could be walking through the airport and I have a Gucci bag that was a gift. And I, you know, I tell y'all all the time, I'm not, I'm not no bougie bitch. I'm going to be honest. I get my, I take shades and I turn them into eyeglasses all the fucking time because I can't fucking see. And they usually designer shades I get from Nordstrom Rack. And I'm sitting there with my glasses on and my hat on. And the first time, the first time I sit down on a plane, motherfucker, what do you do? Fuck you mean, what do I do? And then I talk, started telling my friends, I said, when, when you white, People don't look at you twice right. when you got a Louis Vuitton luggage and a Louis Vuitton. They automatically. Black guy in the Jaguar must be a football player. Yes. And is it me or am I thinking wrong? No, that's because absolutely we, the reaction. We both, yeah. we, white people are just as flashy as black people. Only difference is they won't put on no lime green suit with no hat. Right. Because you look like a unicorn. But. I'm like, we're the same flashiness. We we buy big houses, we ride big cars. Yeah. And nobody These thinks- companies stay in business because of white folk. <laughs> that one Gucci bag that a nigga bought ain't keeping a company that, afloat. I've never I don't been understand a, why people don't get that. I've never been in a Saks Fifth Avenue except the time that you took me and it was just a bunch of caramel pulled back bitches. A bunch of, yes, yeah. just, pull back bitches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said yeah. pull back bitches. That's funny. But I mean, I just realized, I was like, we all like the same shit, but yeah. it's just how people look at you when you're a different race. Because I think with society saying, maybe, how did you get it? Or you can afford it? Or are you rich? Or what you do? But when you see a white woman with it, oh, she got a little tongue back. Uh, I definitely code her differently. I definitely code that person. That person's in a different tax bracket than me. That per- So I, in my mind, I definitely like, that. I see them in a different tax, like a different class. Is me. it? White or black or both? Both. I, I more white. Like wh- if it's mm-hmm. a white woman, then I definitely go. This person probably is married to a rich doctor. Me or, too. And but yeah. why is it? Why we we're trained like that? We're literally trained See, like that. I, I've never been a materialistic person, so most of these brands and shit, I don't know fucking what costs what. I have. This is for fashion mostly, but like 
I couldn't tell you. So when I see a Louis bag, I just, I, it doesn't register to yeah. me. Like what well, you're saying, oh, this bitch got money. I would never think that because I don't, I don't know shit about. So if you see a woman with a big diamond ring, whether you know it's real or not, what do you think? She married a, somebody that's got some money. Yeah. All of these things are to tell other people that you have, you're superior in some way, right? Like that, and that's all that, that's what, that's why, you, like I'm a practical person. I would never, if I were a woman, I would not buy a purse at the price you have eight hundred dollar shoes, and for the life of me, I cannot understand right. why you bought them because you fucking hate them. Yes. <laughs> they hurt your feet so much, and I'm like, then why did you spend eight hundred dollars on these shoes? That you wear them for literally an hour on stage. You're like, oh, I can't wait to take these fucking shoes off. But you want to show like, off to people. You want to say a certain no, no. You want to say the whole reason people wear fashion is they want to say make a certain statement no, about themselves. Because to you other know people. why I don't want to. Sh- Let me say this: nobody knows who those shoes are. No. Only I've had maybe two, and I hate to say this, two white women that say, I like your Stella McCartney. Mm-hmm. And so they, if you're going to name it, you know how much I pay for them. Mm-hmm. I've had black women say, where the fuck you get them shoes from? And I say, and I, I'm the type of person I would never try to say, I, I can't remember. I say, oh, these are Stella McCartney. Right. And I go on to say, they're $850. But if you put them in your box and hold them in that <laughs> box at Sex Fifth Avenue, when they go on sale, you're going to get an email, bitch. And that's what I do. And I got to say this. I only pay $850 one time, and I have three of them. And the other two times, I caught them on sale because I taught myself to put them in that box and wait. Right. So I paid what? I I, I had somebody pay $800 for it, and I waste alcohol. But see, that's, that's what I don't understand. Like, you spend a lot of money on the shoes, but they're not comfortable. So... They cute on stage, and I only you notice I only wear them when I go on stage. And it's the same pair. I only got three pair, and I wear the same pair so on you, stage. So couldn't you time. equally spend some shoes, money on some shoes that you like that feel good? No, because <laughs> feel good is these motherfuckers <laughs> on my feet now. Yeah, I'm saying, like, you can't find <laughs> shoes that cost eight hundred dollars that'll make your feet shoes. feel good. I have a lot of shoes. Back I know. Now. I remember. I remember when you when you when when Morty's closed down the first time, and you gave away a bunch of shoes to some. You remember the you uh-huh. had those fucking. Those boots that you gave to Rachel. <laughs> and she wore a heel off that motherfucker, did she? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should have saw these boots, Chris. They were the most ridiculous. But they, they look ridiculous on her, but then you put them up. On uh, Rachel. <laughs> oh, my God, Rachel. You- <laughs> they look cute on me. And I only wore them like one or two times. And uh, there was like a. They were uh, laced up the back all the way up to the calf. Uh, <laughs> oh, that was really cute. Th- that's why I gave them boots, uh-huh. too. Was they green? I don't think they were. Uh, I, I gave her were, like 10, you gave her a, lot of shoes. a lot of shoes. Cause yeah. I was like, Oh, I just got all this shit in my closet. I brought from Atlanta and I just started giving shit away. But I mean, I'm, I'm more of a thrifty shop than that. Cause I do like designer shit. And I will say this cause I'm not rich. I'm, I'm not fucking rich. One day I pray. I only buy shit. Like if I did something big, you know, a book or TV show, or if I made a shit ton of money or well, not even a shit ton of money, cause shit ton of money ain't, a lot to some people. Uh, but if I make a good amount of number, and I say, well, you know what? I'm going to go out and buy me a purse. Yeah. You know, I have, I have a few designer bags. I don't, you know, I'm more of a book bag person for my laptop. But honestly, one was a gift from my fucking agency that I, with some shoes. And I was like, I can't wear these whole shoes when I take my pilot and I turn that shit in and <laughs> bought me a purse. I, I, when you I with can't me? wear these. No, I wasn't. Yeah, I was they bought me some Those... fucking red bottom shoes because <laughs> it was funny. I had to tell this story. So I go and I take Netflix, right? And I want to be really cute for taking Netflix. So I was like, I got to get some nice shoes. So my friend was like, bitch, go buy some red bottom. I'm like, what the fuck is red bottom? So I look at these shoes. These I bought a pastel McCartney for eight ninety five, And I said, well, I'm going to put some tape at the bottom. I'm going to take these bitches back. And so I bought some red bottom. And then I said, she was like, you know, get on niggas, get on folks, but po folk. So she's like, bitch, just pull a bunch of tape and some sponge at the bottom. So when you <laughs> walk on it, you won't damage the bottom. But I fucked around and walked on rocks and damaged the bottom and sacks wouldn't take them back. So now I'm stuck with a sounder that was $800. And so my, my, when I took them off, my agency were like, why you got that tape on the bottom of your shoe? I'm like, I can't afford these shoes. I'm taking these shoes back. And they was like, they all wipe you. They're like, what? I was like, I can't afford these goddamn shoes. And I was getting paid a decent amount for taping the Netflix thing. And so they was like, what the fuck? And I guess they had dealt with, no, I'm, I'm fucking poor. I ain't got no money. My money count. I got these fucking kids to put through college. So when I take my pilot, they coming out with a fucking pair of 
$1,300 red bottle, badass boots that Quisha helped them pick out. And I was like, oh, these bitches are bad. <laughs> but who going to put they by? I said, nigga, I can't wear these whole slippers. So <laughs> motherfucking four-inch heel, that shit will make your pussy pop. You can tell Quisha picked them out. Yeah, yeah. yeah some shit you be yeah. butt nigga in, just bent over another nigga, hit you from the back. That some shit Quisha was like, she ain't going to like these, but I'm going to get them. Yeah. <laughs> Quisha set your ass up. Look, look, honey, I bought us. A, I bought you a lawnmower for Christmas. Oh, they <laughs> were so bad, y'all. They had to buckle. They were some badass shoes. So uh, I was like, Quisha, why would you pick these shoes off me? She said, bitch, I told him you're like, I said, bitch, I can't wear these motherfucking shoes. I'm fucking 200 some pounds. I can't put all this fat up in the air, bitch. You trying to make my pussy cricket. So, <laughs> make my pussy cricket? <laughs> so I couldn't. <laughs> So what I did Make a moon was, cricket. So what oh, I Oh, jeez. So, and a moon cricket too, nigga. Be done locked up on your dick. So what I did was, honestly. Always good to get in on old timey well, southern racism. What I did racism. was. <laughs> y'all so fucking silly. I literally tucked them bitches back and bought me a Gucci purse. Because I was like, I'm not wearing these old slippers. But it was so funny because when my daughter took the shoes on, they was like, why is your shoes taped up like a nigga done did a drive-by on the bottom of your shoes? I'm like, I'm taking these motherfucking back. But those rock poke holes at the bottom of the red bottom. And I I mean, I probably would never wear those shoes a fucking game. And I was going to sell them because I literally wore them one time right. for Netflix. But I See, can't. I think that's the thing I hate most about being celebrity is you can only wear an outfit one fucking Nigga, time. Nigga, fuck that. I put and on then, jeans and the same shirt for every niggas show. Niggas take pictures and you can't wear that shit. I'm like, well, fuck, you just spent $1,300 on that shirt one time? Fuck that. Not me. I'm I'm gonna wear my shit. And you know, I I I give my hats off to people like some more. That's the sharpest bitch in the game. Ain't no bitch touching the comedian some more. That not only is she funny, the bitch is sharper than a mother. I be looking at her Instagram like, God damn, I wish I could dress like that. <laughs> but that takes a lot of work and a lot of money, and I'm quite sure she got both of her time and money. One special she had on like this glittery purple and her titties were hanging I was just like god damn some more look she <laughs> is funny and then every week she put up a custom gown that she about to drag out mm-hmm. on stage I was like this a bad bitch Samoa is the best dressed bitch in the game ain't nobody touching comedians Samoa and my heads go off to her, but I, I can't get out like, and this lady, I'm I'm about, I'm 47, so I'm, no, I'm quite sure she at least 50, and she's still wearing heels. The bitch have on the baddest mother, the bitch be posting shoes, and I always go Google the shoe that she posts, and I be like, uh, some more, I can't pay $18 <laughs> no <laughs> I can't afford no $3,000 shoes. How many more. shoes you got sitting in your cart right now waiting for the price to go down? I got about four. <laughs> 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 Y'all laugh, but that shit really works. That shit, and right now, since the coronavirus done fucked up the economy, coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I walked into the <laughs> Since the coronavirus done fucked up to everything, man, this shit is on sale like a motherfucker. It's on sale. Yeah, online sales are like, oh, pe- people, yeah, they're like, please buy anything. Here, yeah. 50% off. Yeah, and we, we don't, we don't went an uh, hour and 40 minutes. Y'all we, gonna we, f- we, we have to mention the oxtail. Oh, what about the you oxtail? Gotta, you got to go watch the video in the pat down. So we'll, we'll pin I, it in I'm, the announcements. I'm, I'm, I already marked it. It's, All right. it's marked. But so. I tried oxtail. Miss Pat made me soul food. Gariana made me soul food, and it was very good. So we'll go watch my reaction to it. You'll really like it. Yeah, yeah. He, he, I could tell Chris wish he had, had some melanie in his skin. Is it melanie? Melanie. Melanie, yeah. yeah. yeah he I wish, wish I had, had some melanie in my skin. Uh, melanie, melanoma. He wish he had some of that shit in his skin today. I got melanoma. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> ginger, you got melanoma? Just ginger skin. Just oh. wait. Melanin. Melanie. He wish he had some melanies. <laughs> I put on more hot sauce than either of you two. I don't do hot sauce. But I can't not? do a lot because um, I, I want to taste my food. I want to taste burn. But it's Frank's. It's not that hot. It doesn't matter. Was it pretty good? Yeah, it was really good. It was really good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, we stayed up all morning cooking. I was like, I really want to give Chris some soul food. It was. And we're going to have to start doing like a different dish. Carry on and make the best fucking Have you had her lamb? Uh-uh. Oh mm, my God! Have you had good. a lamb? Yeah, last time. We oh, were here. her lamb is so fucking good. Gariana can cook her ass. So what the fuck? She didn't come up here. She's taking care of the kids, is what she's. She, told me. Yeah, she's always taking care of the kids. We're gonna get her in here for the next episode. But Fifty we, episodes is a lot. I it's know. A lot. I know. When we first started this shit, it was so crazy because, hey, like I said, it was me and Chris, and we brought Dion in, and I just, I didn't really. I, I, you hated it. 
at first. I did. You called you called both of us at different times. We've compared notes now like <laughs> This is a lot of work. <laughs> Fuck this. Like, I, I'm going to quit this. I'll do this if you do want to do it, but I'm going to quit if we don't want to do I it. I think I would have quit it because when people I, when people first, like, you should get a podcast. Because you don't listen to it. That's yeah. why. Yeah, I do not listen to the podcast. I don't, th- I don't think you got how much it meant to people until we started the group, and then you started to get in there and see what it means to people. And then I think your attitude kind of changed around episode 25 or 30, and you're like, okay, this work is worth it because it means a lot to these people. And I think you started to see how mu- how many people are coming out to shows mentioning it. Yeah, that, that's when your attitude changed. Is when it started to be mentioned to you in the shows. Somewhere around episode thirty or forty, everybody started going, "Hey, well, look, love the show." Yeah, we started to pick probably the early twenties. It started to pick up, and people started to come out it was after you went on Joe Rogan. That the numbers really, really oh, spiked. Forget it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and I, I, I tr- we truly appreciate the fan base. You guys are great. I truly want to say thank you guys for giving the, uh, this nigga all those donations because he really fucking needed it. Dion. Dion, all those <laughs> donations. Thank y'all so much for looking out for him yeah, during I, the coronavirus. I, 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 second, third, fourth, and fifth that. I if, if people want to do that, how can they do that, Dion? Uh, you can cash at me. Uh, you can. Well, you don't get no more money, nigga. That's what I need it. <laughs> the poor Damn. boy needs it. No, we, he done had enough, but we appreciate y'all so fucking much. You know, just for the fan who even took out the time to say thank you. I mean, and I say, am sending everybody who sent me money something. So yeah, cool. so he, once, once we get back to business, I'll get your information and you'll you'll get something back from me. It was we. I mean, we, I thank you from the bottom of your heart because I feel you know what I feel like with the with the group. I don't go in there a lot, and I have I've been in there lately because I've been home. But it's almost like a community family. Yeah. You know, one minute we fight, I'm leaving, God damn it, and the next minute I I see you motherfuckers when you leave and come back. I want you to know that. Yeah. Um, um, and I just I like the different opinion. I I, I mean. I I put stuff out there. We put stuff out there, so especially me, so it can be conversation. I want to talk about uncomfortable stuff. I want us to, you know, get to know each other. I want, I mean, I don't want us to hate us because we think different or we believe different. There's nothing wrong with being friends with people who don't agree with you. I have a lot of mother. I don't agree with Chris with this libertarian shit, but that's Chris. This is America. You get to do what the fuck you want to do. Personally, I think Libertarian is a bunch of white boys that can't get laid, but I might be wrong. <laughs> you might be. You might be. You might be right. Slang that, slang that dick, Chris. Let her know. <laughs> so put the live in liberty, Chris. Yes. <laughs> you, gotta, you don't got to talk about it to know. <laughs> I know I'm wrong. Somebody giving Chris some pussy. You can, but, you can go in the Pat Down group right now, and I'm stealing Miss Pat's paper towels, and I'm selling them for $78 or best offer. <laughs> so get in there and make a bid. I mean, but it's, I feel like it's a family day. I feel like people really do... Enjoy y'all cracks me to fuck up. They post some of the wildest they, shit. They, you, I think you commented the other day. These memes are killing me, and it then was. there was literally a <laughs> bunch of fucking memes. I don't know where people make these, find these. There was some of the funniest shit. I, I always screenshot the ones that really crack me up. I always send them to you. Be, people, people always send me stuff. I always share memes on my Instagram stories, and so now people are starting to send them to me. And it's just like this audience has a great sense of humor, and they get like the. The quarantine memes in the group are the best that they've been. Like, you have to go join the group. There's a link in the description, but make sure that you get in there and and share memes. It's, it's, yeah, it's the Pat Down Podcast group, so make sure you join that. And I mean, we, we it's 50 episodes, and I didn't think we would make it here, but I mean... I, let, I never had a doubt. Well, they don't never. I, you, and I, I, what's, what's so weird about me is the way I was raised... It's almost like a womb. tortured. <laughs> you didn't call it race. You were tortured. Raised means nurtured. <laughs> yeah, you were <laughs> formed into the a way functioning I came member of society. Up, <laughs> the way I came up, it, I, it, for some reason, you were a it, seed planted in shit. Is what you were. <laughs> God damn, <laughs> God. It's, it's it's like you know when you when you're being abused as a child. Is no matter how far you come in life. It's something that's always telling you you can't do it. Yeah. and I can always hear my voice, my mother's voice. Uh, uh, somebody, uh, my first kid's father, telling me what I can't do, and it's a, it's like I'm always working against them to prove them wrong. Right, right. So, and I, and DM was like, "Why you always doubting yourself?" I said, "Because 
it's a little person in my head to tell me yeah, I can't. I hate that. Like shit. at a certain point, you have to look at your proven track record of winning and yeah, go. I, like, you, I am she, a. Fa- I am good at this. It, no matter what show she's about to like, every time something big comes, I don't know if I'm good enough. I don't, I'm like Pat. What the fuck are you talking about? I I'm wanted like, to kill you in San Francisco because you were so nervous and you were just yeah, acting like, out, and I was just like. We know how to do this. It's going to be fine. Yeah, like, you, we're going to be funny. I, the world will beat you down enough. You don't got to doubt. Yeah. What? I, I get that it might keep you humble in some weird way, but like, and because I've watched you for 14 years now, I, I remember the very first time I heard you, you went on stage right before me at an open mic that had like 15 people in the crowd and like eight of them were comics and you got to stand in ovation. And from the Literally from the first time I saw you, I was like, I I just knew. I was like, this woman is, like, take away everything else. You are at your core a funny person. Like, funny just come. Sometimes you don't even know you're being funny. Sometimes you're not trying to be funny. But, like, and you you get bits that come out of nowhere. And you're like, God. And I tell tell you all the time, I go, it's not fucking fair. It's not (laughs) fair. Just funny just comes out of you. And I'm not trying to suck your dick or anything, but I'm just saying. I I don't have one. You don't. (laughs) Ashley will get you (laughs) one for a good deal. Ashley said (laughs) said you're transitioning. Manly as hell. (laughs) I'm just saying, like, like, I, I don't know what it is that just funny is always around you. And uh, I'm just I'm grateful to get to watch it because I love seeing you doubt yourself and then going out and smashing. Yeah, because you always prove me right when I tell you, Pat, you, you, you tripping. I, and I think I don't know. I don't know if it's for humble. It probably is because I always I always try to make sure. I always try to make people feel like we all on the same level. You know, when you're my friend, you're my friend. I want to work hard to bring you up and we all come up together. That's just how I am. You know, I go all out the way for when, you know, I don't deal with too many comics. It's him and my friend Cortland. But I always try to make sure that that they rise when I rise. And, I, you know, I was talking a couple of weeks ago and I said, you know, you have to look beyond me. If I grow up to be, if I blow up to be a star one day, don't ever depend on me to make you. I want to see you stand alone. So one of your goals was would to be get the fuck away from Miss Pat. You know, you always going to love me, but you want to stand on your own. Right. Because when I opened for Cat Williams and D-Ray and Arnie SJ, and I saw the money that they made, and I was like, dude, I'm I'm just as good. I want to I want to be I want to be them. I want to be standing on my own like them. I never forget the day I opened for Cat Williams. Who's in? Who's in? Um, was it Kentucky? She said, "I'll never forget," and then she forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was uh, the, well, the first time I ever opened for him. I can't remember where we was. We, I walk out there, and I, you know, I've seen Cat Williams. Everybody know he was famous as fuck. He was at the height of his peak. It was like his maybe his fourth tour. It was the Catapultlet DVD he released that he was working on when I was opening for him. And so I wasn't like a big Cat William fan. I didn't follow him like that, but I was honored to be opening for him. And the money was fucking great. Anyway, I walked out there and it was literally like 25, 30,000 people. Wow. And I had no idea that Cat was a crossover like that, like mainstream. Yeah. And the whole. I watch Cat Williams all the time. Yeah was white. Yeah. And as it went up, you could tell where the niggas bought the tickets <laughs> late at. And I was like, holy shit. This guy's a crossover. I had no fucking idea. That was the very first show I did for him. And I remember that energy that I felt that night walking out on that big ass stage with all this shit in the back. And I remember doing a really good job that night. And I said, this is what I want. Yeah. So I always dream of having like a the a big ass theater show and walking away, you know, as you know, walking that feeling. I know it's almost like crack and uh, when you first get high, they say that high. I want that high again, and I know the only way I'm gonna get it is once I accumulate that audience that I was in in front of that night. Yeah, you have what most successful people that I've seen have, which is that dedication to your craft you will work as hard as possible to become really good at your craft and you have that little bitty thing that says i'm never going to be good enough and nothing is ever enough for me and i'm gonna that's what my husband said i'm gonna i'm gonna prove to myself that i can get over that next little thing like you know i i see it in the people that i work with like they you know they're in the radio hall of fame 
it's not enough. We need to, how do we optimize this? How do we get this thing better? How do we do that thing better? Well, if you get satisfied, you you don't have anything to work towards. Yeah. And that's what my husband's like, you're never fucking satisfied. So I say, well, well, if I get satisfied, well, what am I going to do? I don't have nothing else to do. You don't have anything else to work with. So I think mentally I've trained myself to, it's always something to be done. Like when I sold crack, and I had this thing, I said the early bird catches the run while everybody else is out here partying that night. (laughs) While everybody else was out partying that night, I wasn't a big party person. I would literally leave the club, go home, cut my crack up, and then go out there and sell my dope. <laughs> the early well, bird catches the crackhead. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep. That, but I was the I first motherfucker. That nursery story. Yeah, but I was I was the first motherfucker to the trap, and I was the last motherfucker to leave. You never read Aesop's Fumbles when you were a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck y'all. But I mean, honestly, that's I've always worked like that. Like I'm a headliner, and I've been doing it headlining for about four, five, about five, six years now. And I go to clubs and they be like, Miss Pat, you're here an hour early. And I'm like, yeah. they like, the headliner never show up an hour early. I said, well, I do. Yeah. Because I always think in my mind, somebody might want to shoot up a stove, want to jump off a bridge, fuck up traffic. If I leave at the time that people think I should be there 10 minutes before or 30 minutes before, well, I'm stuck in traffic. And I can't do my show. Yeah. But if I left an hour early and that nigga jump off that bridge, I'm able to do my show. Yeah. That's just how I think. It's profe- tra- prof- was- yeah, professionalism is huge. Yes. He wouldn't have jumped off the bridge if the crackhead had been selling. That's right. <laughs> Fuck you. But that's just how I, I am. The crack- <laughs> Fuck you, Dion. But that's just how I am. I mean, she, people- <laughs> she said, everybody else at the club, I'm at home cooking up dope. <laughs> I she said cook. it in such a way as to show what a noble life she was living. She I'm was a go-getter. I'm going to get these crackheads. She was superior to those other drug dealers. Well, yeah. I mean, you out here partying, uh, mall shopping, nigga. I was selling dope. I was out there selling my crack. I don't have time for that bullshit. I mean, the, 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 that little fashionable shit didn't... didn't. I had kids to feed, too. I mean, yeah. I, I don't... The motherfucker, I was the only woman out there, and I had kids to feed. Right. I had rent to pay. I'm 16 years old, nigga. My rent $1,000. I had two motherfucking children. <laughs> and a baby daddy with my probably about 12, 14 children. And he had gonorrhea. Uh, yep, gonorrhea, crabs, and all the little shit, too, the nigga gave me. So I had something to live for. Not the gun or the kid. <laughs> when I was 16, I was living for trying to get my license. I mean, it's just unreal. When life. I was 16, I was trying to lose my virginity. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody, please take this. Well, when I was 16, I already had two kids and an abortion. So I was already a mama. Now I was hey, I, I was trying to survive. I had real fucking issues and real shit to be worried about. Nigga, I had bills. When I met Garrett... And I remember I used to get evicted all the time, right? Because I was moving to motherfucking place. I'm like, fuck y'all, I ain't paying y'all niggas no rent, nigga. And so I would get... <laughs> rent, rent is theft. What are you talking about? <laughs> Turn into little Bernie Sanders all of a sudden. How the fuck did they let you move in I with would, that attitude? I would make up fake IDs and shit. And uh, so... Make Wait, a little... did they never ask for a down payment? <sighs> did you have a deposit on any of this stuff? Yeah, like... No, I would leave a deposit. You would, you would, you would. So you would make the deposit, and then she'd forge the deposit check. That's (laughs) what she'd do. Well, no, I would just leave the deposit. I was always moving in. Okay, back in the day, Atlanta used to have a lot of moving in specials, right? So you know the apartments that didn't ask you for a whole lot of like some thirty nine, yeah, ninety nine dollar moving. Oh, nigga, we good for three months. Let's move in right here. Just don't unpack. So, uh, (laughs) (laughs) why do you drive a U-Haul truck? (laughs) Nigga said, don't unpack. So I moved. My daddy got me an apartment in seven. You no, know, it wasn't seven courts. He got me an apartment. I can't even think of the name of these apartments off Camelton Road. At the time, they were considered a pretty good apartment. So my, my I meet Gary. He comes over, and um, at the time, my other nieces was living with me before my sister kids. And we sitting there, and uh, he's like, "Oh, you got a nice apartment." And I was like, "Thank you." And um, he's like, "You on Section Eight?" I said, "No, are you looking for a bitch on Section Eight?" Yeah. And he's like, "Uh, no." So we kind of like started talking and he would come over and keep the kids while I drive his car to forge checks and shit. He did not know I was a check forger. And so I would come back and get this nigga polo. He's like, where you get all this shit from? Nigga don't ask me no motherfucking question. I'm a, I'm a street bitch. And so uh, while I was gone, somebody knocked on the door and told Garrett I was about to get evicted. <laughs> the p- people from the rent office right. say, uh, tell him the truck is coming up here and whatever. So I said, well, take me over here and see if my daddy can get me another apartment. Because what it was is 
I got to fighting with this dude at my apartment complex, right? So I met a dude before I met Gary. And, you know, Nick, you know, when you're looking for somebody to love, you just fall for, you know, bullshit. Well, he fucked around. Shut up! <laughs> Shut the hell up! It, it wouldn't be the pat down. Shut without. up! It, it literally sounds like they're murdering each other down there. Bitch, Gary, I don't know. Y'all shut the fuck up! <laughs> I don't think you could hear it, but it's because there's compression on the board. But um, but anyway, we um, so I met this dude, and you know, he, he we supposed to be going to the movie, so he's like, go and slip into some set, you know, nice. So I take out my pants, tell him to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Stop uh, having fun. Uh, this is not a place where you enjoy yourself. <laughs> so anyway, she got him down so in the basement like Aunt Frank <laughs> for a little FEMA. Shut camp. the fuck up! 32. So I take off my pants, FEMA right? Region seven and, I, down there. and he said he wanted something to drink, so right. I left my my welfare check in my pocket, and the nigga stole my welfare check, which was two hundred thirty five dollars because I only had two kids. So I go back in there, and this nigga done ran out of my welfare check. Said, whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> he. <laughs> He told you to slip into something sexy so he could go into your pants and steal your check. That's, that's a good move, especially with a dumb so, 14-year-old. I was, I was like 17 at a time. So he steal my welfare check out my pocket, y'all. And he runs out the door. Well, I'm a crazy bitch. I run in after this nigga, jump yeah. in the side wonder like the Dukes of Hell, because you know I used to love the Dukes of Hell. <laughs> I jumped in that side wonder, and that nigga hit me in my cheek. I said, nigga, you're going to take more than that and knock me out, nigga. I'm a hard bitch. I took that nigga key, and I broke it off in that initial nigga and yanked that bitch out and turned the car off, right? So now he can't turn the car back on. And he like, oh, bitch, you done broke my key. I go, I had a bar, like a, a entertainment bar where you put the TV at and shit. Mm-hmm. And I had a, a bottle of Grand Marie, y'all. And they, I had the big bottle, too. And I said, give my motherfucking welfare check, nigga. I took that Grand Marie and I slung that bitch and it, it just stayed in his windshield. Oh. And nigga, everything on that bar from here and see the top shit, I was slinging it at that nigga. I went out there, I was trying to pull that nigga hair. He ain't had no hair. I was hitting <laughs> that nigga like a real motherfucker. Fucking nigga. This nigga called the police on me because I was whooping his motherfucking ass. <laughs> so the police get there. Come to find out the nigga sold dope down the street from me, my house. I didn't even know this, right? I met him over there in trap. I think he about to take me to the movie just talking out. He told me he's a military guy. All oh, this shit. Oh, I done met somebody. I'm so sick of there. Well, this nigga had a baby mom. I had a wife who worked at the hospital, right? I ain't even know that. I went out there before the police got there. I got my butcher knife, nigga. I flat all four times. I said, nigga, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you gonna leave your car gonna leave this motherfucker in the ambulance today, bitch. You went through all that for $235? Yeah, he thought he had some money. So the police come and he knew the nigga and he knew the nigga wasn't about in there, right? So he said, How much money you asked? I had $235. Nigga motherfucker stole my motherfucking welfare check. And so he had some other money, but the police knew he was a pussy ass nigga and gave me my money back, right? Bitch, I'm gonna kill you. I said, nigga, you ain't the first nigga that gonna try and you ain't the last nigga that might do it. Come on with it, motherfucker. Now tell your hoe I flat all her ties. I flat all four ties. Nigga, I was so mad. I kicked the side mirror. This is when I was crazy. I kicked both side so mirrors off. Yeah. <laughs> I, kicked, <laughs> I kicked both side mirrors off the car and then the Grand Marier was stuck in the windshield. I swear, that was a, that's a hard Did ball. Did you take a shot out of it? No, I, ain't, I, only, I didn't even drink at the time. It was just up there for decorate. I slung that motherfucker through that windshield, and the police said, bitch, you threw Grand Marie at the house? <laughs> I, don't, I don't give a fuck. I want my welfare check back, nigga. And so I had a forty-five pistol, right? That was my oh, baby no. daddy that didn't have no bullets. And I went yeah, out there. Yeah, but they don't know that. Yeah, but the police wasn't there. I hit that nigga upside the head with that forty-five pistol. He told the police, she hit me in the head with a pistol. I said, I ain't got no gun. I'm a convicted fella. I ain't got no goddamn gun. <laughs> Y'all can't come to my house. I ain't got no gun. That's what I told that motherfucker. I don't got no gun. So did he give you the check back? Yeah, he got my money back. Polly man get my money back. I Lost eight hundred dollars in Grand Marnier, <laughs> but no, the bottle didn't break. He said, "I said, can I have my look back? I got my look and put it back on the bar." It Wait, bro- was it open or was it? It was a brand new bottle. It never opened. It was a big ass bottle. Now, and- after something like that, when you walk in the house, how quickly do you start laughing about it? I felt proud. I whooped that nigga ass. <laughs> I whooped that nigga ass. 
I sure, that nigga thought I was crazy. And then when I slid through that window like the Duke's ass on his <laughs> ass, he wasn't ready for that. He did not, he, and you know, that was, so this right here was probably, I met Garrett in 92, so they were probably like 91, 92. I really want to see an animated version of this story I just telling. So I you had to roll the wonders up. I you had to roll the wonders up. I have never been that angry in my life. Have you ever oh, become shit. that violent with anybody, Dion? Like, not over $235. Nigga, <laughs> what you talking about? This. I waited 30 days for that motherfucker 235. They were giving a bitch a dollar a day. <laughs> How many days are in Wait, the month? This is Brian Williams math. <laughs> 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 well, probably ten dollars a day. <laughs> no. Careful that button. Oh my god. Whatever the fuck. I waited 30 days for that 235 dollar nigga. And wasn't no pussy. How, how would he have been able to cash the check? It wasn't a check, it was cash. He took it out of my pocket. I thought, oh, okay. Yeah. And when I slid through that one, so like, you cashed the check and then I already had the money. He okay. didn't know I had okay. the check, okay. and he just decided to go in my pocket and steal my money. He thought I was something. That's pussy why I was bitch. so confused. Like he's not gonna be able to do anything with it. No, why? Are you... Well, I'm just saying he stole my welfare check because I had just cashed. It. Let me clear it up. Okay. I had just cashed it, and nigga stole my welfare I'm so check. Confused. And when I jumped through that one on that nigga and broke that key off in that mother, and then that's why they put me out. They would put me out. So right after that, I met Garrett. Okay. And so. I met Gary and uh, they tell him I'm, I'm, I'm that I gotta move and shit. So he's like, these people came out here and said you gotta move, but I think I had to move at that time because I wasn't paying no rent. And so um, I said, well, take me over there to my daddy so he can get me another apartment. So Gary was like, he taught me the first time we couldn't find my daddy. So the second time he said, look, I just get your apartment. I'm like, for real, nigga, you got good credit. And Garrett opened up his wallet. The first nigga I ever seen with a Visa card. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, Garrett's like, Dion. I met the most wonderful girl. She is. So funny. She's such a cat. I wasn't even, fu- I wasn't like, even funny back me, me, Meanwhile, one week earlier. <laughs> <laughs> never know what bullets you're going to get. And so we, we ended up moving in together. We ended up moving in together. So that apartment that he was getting for you, he, he it was, became your apartment? Oh, yeah. It was Windjammer. We moved in an apartment called Windjammer. And, uh, that not, sounds appropriate. <laughs> sounds like the move they put on you when you moved <laughs> hey. in that apartment. He, we moved down the street from where I got evicted from. And... um. And we lived there for like a year, and then I got custody of my sister kids, and then we moved into the house that I bought in Riverdale. But yeah, we moved in that apartment together, and he paid all the bills. And I was like, he paid all the bills? So during the day, while he was at work, I was out forging chicks and committing crimes. <laughs> Until he sat me down, he was like, look. No wonder he's tired. You, you gotta <laughs> stop selling crack. You gotta stop selling crack. He, said, and he, he was like, you can't be out here doing it to these people, cheat. Do you know that'll fit? I'm like, I don't give a fuck. That, no, I don't give a fuck. He was like, Pat. So he kind of explained to me what happened mm-hmm. when you fucking fuck with other people's money. And I was yeah. like, what? They don't be telling us that in the hood. We fight. I just thought this shit was just floating in the air. No. And so... um. Definitely I, not. I stopped. I stopped all the crime. You were going in people's pockets like that, nigga. We just didn't have Grand Marnier bottles to throw at yeah. your yeah. car. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, uh, but good for you. Like, once you realized, like, oh, I'm hurting other people, you're like, I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah, I mean, I just felt, and he would say, he sat me down, he said, think about this. And I didn't even have my sister kid. He said, if you keep doing this shit, what happens if you go to prison? I'm not your kid's father. And that man got the rights to your kids. And I was like, what? That nigga gonna get my kid? Oh, hell no. Nah. Not that old child molester dumb ass, no reading ass nigga. Yeah. And I was like, uh-uh. Nah, I gotta stop this shit. I'm gonna have to stop this shit. She getting FaceTimed by Nikea. What nigga? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> he said, oh my God. This is the first time seeing Here, here let me see the phone and let me turn it on the thing. Hi, Nikea. Hi, Nikea. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Hello. Where you at, nigga? On the way home. You should have came out here, fat boy. I cook ox tails. I'm on the way now. <laughs> <laughs> Come on and get your side teeth filled in. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Come on, what, fat. What you done did to your hair? I am uh, down a roast, bitch. Okay. <laughs> 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 what I look like. <laughs> I almost didn't recognize you. Oh, good, motherfucker. I see you. You, you, you almost look like a real woman. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> Nigga, no side. Uh, why your side mouth look like a garage door opener? 
<laughs> Same with the back of your mouth look like the back of the garage open. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all niggas is retarded. Oh, fuck you. Come on, boy. All right, y'all. We, we got to wrap this up. This has been wonderful. We love you guys. We truly appreciate y'all. And we will see y'all on the next fucking podcast. Let's keep rocking and let's get to 100. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to another episode of The Pat Down. Make sure you check out my website at misspatcomedy.com for all of my social media, my tour dates, my book. Make sure you spread the word about my podcast. Please rate and review. Please rate and review and share. Thank y'all so much, y'all. I've been Miss Pat.